Hello, fellow eaters. <laughs> it's episode four of... Yeah, I guess that's better than what you were trying to do. You, you, you can finish your little episode I four. haven't even gotten to the introduction yet. <laughs> you can yet. keep going. I'll, I'll say what I have to say. My after. feelings. <laughs> this is episode four of Tangent Talk. If you've managed to listen to the first three, I commend you. If this is your first episode, wow. <laughs> um, uh, as you know, it's me, uh, Peter Cooper, as the host of every episode. And my guest today is, you can say your first name, you can say both names. Hi, I'm James Johnston, and the thing I was laughing about earlier was he decided to open up this episode by saying... Let's get it. Let's get it, which, I don't know if that, like, unsettles you, but I felt a little unsettled. So that's why I said, what's up, fellow geeters? <laughs> I feel more comfortable now. That used to be my Instagram thing, it used to say Peter, a.k.a. Yeeter, but now it's Peeber, because... I'm glad you've, like, matured. <laughs> you know what that is? Growth. <laughs> Character development. Yeah. You've, you're stronger as a person. Hell now. yes. <laughs> well, let's start with the uh, the bandage that I always have to rip off when I meet, when I do it. Because I always have to be like, how do I know you? How do I know you? Uh, you're my next door neighbor. I live right across the dorm, like the dorm hall from you. Yeah, he hears a lot of the massive sex I'm having. Oh, That's all kind of... of it. All singular sex you have because you have no one with you. My roommate. Yeah. He watches. That's not... Is it a sexual act if you watch? He like... watches. <laughs> I don't... He's not one to, like, join in, I'd say. I thought he was going to stay in here. I was like... Oh. <laughs> I really thought so because I'm like... It's like... <laughs> That's what I figured you had, like, a thing going I was on. Like, I was it's like... It's like 5 o'clock. I didn't want to, like, kick <laughs> him out. And my roommate was in here, like... Because my roommate knows... knows James. Yeah, we're actually going to live together next year. Those two. We're decent friends. He's going to be on, he's going to be, don't tell him, but he's going to be my last episode here. Because I thought it'd be cool to be like, he wants to be on it really badly. That's cute. And yeah, I, thought, yeah. I thought it'd be cool to, wow. like a year in summary. <laughs> um, ask him to ask like the top five most embarrassing things he's seen you done. I've seen you do. <laughs> All right, bet. I, I, might, mean, I, I think, that'd be, a, I think yeah, that'd be a cute. pretty good... Humble. What's humble. the what's the cringiest thing you've seen? <laughs> I have s- stories about him. Anyway, so he really no, has... see that 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 that'd be the the spark because you guys would just go back and forth no, against each did... other. I'm pretty sure he might have more tea on you because he's see like he's already like a basic person, so I... he can't be like hurt by it because he already knows his limits. I can't. But I feel like you don't know your limits. I can't say what I want to say because he doesn't know that I do what I. Do. <laughs> but like I have receipts on his embarrassment. Oh you, you got you got some of that hip lingo, you got that T. You have that T yeah. on him. Yeah. Sis. I don't know why well, I made fun of you. I don't know sis. why I made fun of you for saying a skinny, because I literally said sis. Yeah, I li- no, I said sis and T. I'm really T isn't that weird anymore. It's not that fun. Sis is weird. Sis is weird. I I, I don't I'm sorry. I would say let's restart by Hey I feel sisters. Like... <laughs> <laughs> um, so J- James lives across from me, but like other people live across from me. Why are you? Why are you here? Um, why are you here? <laughs> it's a d- deep philosophical question oh, that everybody. God. I have asks. to ask myself that every morning. <laughs> I wake up and go, why, why, why am, am I here? here? Oh my god! Um, <clears throat> well, I'd say because we're good friends. Um, we chums. We we chum. Is that we we chums? We ch- chums like pals, buddies. We, nobody says we chums. We are chums. I'd say you're my buddy. I Let's don't, get it. I mean, might have to re re provoke. Like <laughs> he's like, I'm about to walk out. I'm about, I'm about to take away the chum term. Now. <laughs> Y'all mind if I head out? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> um. Yeah. No, we're good friends. Um. I mean, I don't know what else you want me to say. Like what we like, how we like, hang out or. Okay, uh, James, uh, I'm his, uh, like, you know how, like, you see on, like, 2004, like, reality TV or, like, anything with Paris Hilton from 2006 and she has a tiny purse and a purse dog? I'm, like, his purse dog. Um, <laughs> I've never, never seen it that way. But you know what I'm talking about. No, yeah. no, it's not wrong. It's just, it's very, it's a very abstract viewpoint. Maybe, how maybe I, how I pr- I've never thought of myself as per- Paris Hilton. Maybe I shouldn't be a purse dog because that implies like you own me. I'm like his, <laughs> I'm like his carry on. <laughs> See, you're like you already. I think just the fact that you have that purse dog like analogy, that's already thinking way too hard about our nice friendship. Yeah. And the fact that you're looking even more into it is you're thinking just insanely hard on it. I 
don't want to think about this anymore. I, okay, James uh, is... Well, well, this is what... I'll, I have a thing to talk about this, actually, in a second. <laughs> but I'll, I'll probably pitch at the end of this segment, because, like, it's going to be a segment. What's, what's good? Uh, James is definitely the best in our hall. Probably the best I know personally at Super Smash Brothers <laughs> Ultimate. Uh... I mean, I appreciate it. Of course, it'd be like I'm a very humble person, so I wouldn't say I think yeah, of myself like, as the best that I know. Yeah, I, yeah, no, definitely that. Um, I've been playing Smash Brothers competitively for about four years. So I was, you started with? Wii. I started. I started with Wii U. I played for fun when the 3DS came out. Um, my whole like underdog story or just story, oh. the story or whatever. Is um I had a I had a few friends during my freshman year of high school, uh, we hanged out a lot and they were super into Smash Brothers for the Wii U and another Wii U the 3DS because that's what came out first and they're like oh my god uh, the most important ones Phil Phil's like say. Phil's my best friend Phil and um, a daddy's watching but hi um, <laughs> you can send it to him I probably will um, but yeah no he he was super into Smash Brothers along with our other mutual friend the and one he was the, like, the one you mentioned earlier who was like me or whatever. No, 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 no. no. D, uh, D, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, ir- ir- irrelevant. Um, yeah, no. Uh, Phil is super into it, and him and another mutual friend were like, dude, yeah, we should totally do something with it. Like, I hear there's like tournaments. Because there was this video, a very inspirational video released for Smash called the Smash Village Documentary. I've seen that. Yeah, it's a very, like, that That literally, like... That's Melee, right? Yeah, it's yes, Melee, I've but like, it. it's still like, you can take from it something. And it gave it gave life to the scene, and like it motivated a lot of us to like start playing competitively. And after watching that and just having fun with 3ds and stuff, the Wii U was just coming out, the Wii U version of uh, Smash Brothers. And we were like, "Oh, dude, there's a tournament going on!" And I I didn't own a Wii U, and I really just barely played the 3ds. So I would only play it with them, but I didn't want to be alone on a Saturday. And I figured going to like Charlotte, that's where our first tournament was called. Uh, Matthew Smashers is that is that an orthodontist place? Really interesting. Oh my god. I know where that is. Re- oh, really? Because that's where I'm from, and I'm pretty sure I've been to that orthodontist. <laughs> what? It's such a small world. Revelations. It's such a small world. Yeah, no, it was a very weird, because um, I wasn't super into it, but my friends brought, I, I decided to come along because, mm. you know, I wanted not to be alone. And we brought, um, I think, two of our other mutual friends. They didn't really play either, but they were just wanting, you know, maybe in the same boat as me. I think one of them was a little confident in his play, but he was really bad just like the rest of us, us 14-year-olds who never played. I was going to say, y'all are 14 because I <coughs> can tell what year. Freshman year, four years ago. Well, yeah. I know what day Super Smash Bros. comes out because I had a traumatic event happen that same day, oh. so um, it's fine. But um, we, we went to the tournament. I really had no idea what we were doing. Um, we didn't own GameCube controllers at the time, so I don't, I don't even remember what I was using. But I think I might have borrowed someone else's. But we played. Uh, my friends did decently. They didn't lose immediately. I did. Uh, I went 0-2. And I was like, I lost. But I had fun. Uh, I can't blame myself for my loss. And then I just kept competing. Um, I never was crazy in Smash 4. I was what people would call a pot feeder. Where I literally just paid bracket and then lost. And then whoever won got my money. You know, a, a humble life to live. And um, only recently, um, I never really practiced that hard in Smash 4, but now Ultimate's out, and I, I think I have a lot more of a fun time with it. Mm-hmm. So I definitely practice a lot more, and I feel like I'm definitely innovating myself a lot more than I ever did in Smash 4. Yeah, and you definitely got the advantage of, like, well... I would mm-hmm. say my character being buffed is also an advantage in itself. I play a uh, Roy, who is pretty bad in Smash 4, but everything bad about him got turned into at least pretty good for all of his moveset kit, kit and tools. So I'm pretty happy that my character turned out from bad to really good. Yeah. I meant, well, I was thinking more, um, I was going to say, like, oh, well, you had the advantage of, like, for this game, Ultimate, to, like, start off as everyone else is starting off. But, I mean, not really. With It, it doesn't really make it sound it. In, like, a competitive scene, that doesn't really apply because everyone, like, I, I've been playing Smash 4, but everybody else who goes to the competitive scene has also been playing Smash 4. And right. if, you were, if you were pretty good at Smash 4, chances are you're good at Ultimate. Um, a lot of our, like, PR or power rankings are mostly the same with a few new people. Like, Phil. Phil got on the PR. I'm really happy about that. What's um, the power ranking? Power ranking. Um, so, pretty much, North Carolina as a state, uh, every state does it for their scene. Um, North Carolina as a state, um, they count every tournament together. Like, every tournament, like, big or small. 
and they count everybody's records, like how who they've beaten, uh, the upsets, how many tournaments they've won, and they um, there's a, a group of people in the Smash scene who make a PR list that stands for power rankings, right? And it's pretty much who for that season, which is like three maybe four months. Um, I know they skipped like December when the game first came out. Of course, um, because they didn't want to like count that towards something. Everyone's still figuring it out. And exactly. Like a whole month. Exactly. Yeah. And um, so the group uh, decides using like statistics to figure out who for that season was the best. Okay. So, and this season was one through twenty. And for the first time, which is very humbling and very happy for me, but I imagine even better for him, because um, me and Phil have always like well, Phil more than me. I, I was just always been there supporting, but Phil always wanted to make the power rankings for Smash Four. But we lived in Wilmington at the time, and Wilmington is like kind of like the uh, the outskirts of the competitive scene. Mm-hmm. Me and Phil had to make our own like Wilmington Smash scene, host tournaments and stuff like that. Wow! And um, not that many people traveled to Wilmington. Not it's pretty far out of the way. Everything. Yeah, like um, the center of like the competitive scene for Smash here is definitely Raleigh. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's a center for everything. Yeah, of course. Um, so yeah, Phil. So me and Phil never really got to go out. Um, because no one really left Wilmington, no one really came to Wilmington, but Phil was dedicated. Phil, Phil always wanted to be good. It wasn't my idea to host tournaments; it was one hundred percent his. <laughs> he was he loved the scene, he loved everything about it, and he worked really hard. But since he never had the time to travel, or just couldn't travel because we were we were really young at the time, and even when we had cars, we still like, you know three hour drives a long way. Um, um, so he never made PR, but he was always close, like. On a 10-man PR list in Smash 4, maybe he was 11 or 12, so they didn't count him in. Just an mm-hmm. honorable mention. But um, now that we're in college, uh, Phil went to Chapel Hill, which is a pretty close place to Raleigh, and they have their own set of tournaments, and there's a lot of good players around him. Um, he finally had the way to, like, shine, like, finally prove that he could actually do it, and he made number seven, which is... That's really good. It, it's re- Well, he deserves it. He Honestly, deserves, yeah. Yeah, he deserves it. Uh, he's really happy. It's very... I wouldn't say I don't think humbling is the right word for it, but I was I was happy for him, and I can't even imagine how happy he was. Yeah, I mentioned on a um, I don't think I think it was episode two. I mentioned, um, I think I might have not mentioned by name, but like, I kind of am like the same way with James as I am with as he is, just mentioned with Phil. I'm looking at the and I'm doing the same thing as I did the episode two. I'm looking at the computer <laughs> like it's an audience member, um, but like you know I'm like a ch- like. I don't want to say cheerleader, but I just get happy for people. Like when your support, they your, your support. I like seeing people succeed, <laughs> so I just get very happy for them. So like, I, feel I get, that. I, I get probably more than anyone that idea of just being happy to see someone succeed. Yeah, and like, it's weird. It, it's weird that you not weird. It's just like interesting to me. That's just like, oh, this is the game that got. That's like serious to you. Well, there's a, maybe there's others. Um, but. I I wish there's a lot of other games I spend my time into. I play a lot of competitive like fighting games. Um, oh, yeah, I, you mentioned that. I really like Street Fighter. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't say I'm good at any of them. I, I have fun with them a lot. I spend a lot of time, but there's never really a scene for me to attend. Like if there was a Street Fighter scene and a Smash Brothers scene in the same place, chances are I would probably go to the Street Fighter one over it. Really? Yeah, it, it's just that there's no one around to play. You know what? I, if that makes sense. Yes, like, it does. Like you can't if uh, you can't win can't play so um because I, I really like street fighter i like more traditional fighting games like street fighter um i'm really bad at like dragon ball fighters and like marvel versus capcom but i still have a lot of fun from them just um i feel like the learning curve fits me more hmm. uh, i think smash is really fun too and i definitely wouldn't be spending as much time as i do in it normally but um <laughs> i think if it was by myself like with my whole like backstory for it i don't think i would have been participating in it because I find what I what I find most important about the scene competitively, everything's just the friends. Just everybody I get to talk to and meet. I feel like that's the best part. I really I really have a come and go competitive mindset when it comes to playing. I I'm okay with losing, I'm okay with winning. I don't really strive for either. I'm very much go with the flow. And um I feel like it's I feel like it's the whole mindset thing. And I think uh, when you're talking about your whole supportive thing, I feel like that helps me out sometimes. Um dang, dang. Because uh, it's always good to have someone in your corner. Because I, I thought about this a lot recently moving up here and how much more I've been, like, doing better. I've been improving a lot more than I ever did in Smash 4, probably because I attempt, I actually attempt to. Right. And, and I could see, like, Smash 4 was hard to see my flaws, but in this game, more and more, I realize what I need to be doing, yeah. what I'm doing wrong. And it's just very nice to have these people because it's very weird to be the person, like, the Smash guy. That's usually what I, like... I feel like that's my title. Yeah. Everybody has, like, a societal... It kind of is. When I, like, yeah. mention you, I'm like, 
he plays competitive Smash Brothers. Yeah, um, it's super weird, and um, it's it, it's very weird because like everybody's like, "Oh, dude, you're so good at Smash," and you can't like deny it. You can't just be like, "No, I'm not. Shut up," or anything like that. You just go like, "Yeah, I guess." Like that's how I usually respond, and it kind of fills me up with like a sense of like motivation. Yes, yeah. I feel like since everybody like talks to me that way and they see might see me as such like a higher place than I actually am, I feel like that makes me want to strive to at least attempt to reach where they how they see I am. You know, does that make sense? No, it does. Dude, I guess, like, in a weird way, just say make them proud. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Live, live up to people's expectations. Exactly. I, 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 it, I wonder what people... Oh, my God. That just made me think, like, I wonder what people think... What, what guy am I? The gay guy. Let's be real. <laughs> the gay guy or the guy who talks too much? <laughs> I mean, it depends on the... So everybody has different state, like, tags in so- each social group. They are, so... The gay guy, let's be honest. Pro- that's probably your friends, no me ask. I don't care. I don't care. It's like, you know what? Whatever. Oh, oh, how dare they? Oh, my God. They point out the one thing that probably sets me apart from most of them, and I don't care about a Smash Brothers as much. Which, I mean, we can mention that. You, you just kind of tangentially uh, mentioned, like, the friends, the social scene. Um, I don't know if I'm... They know me, like the the mm-hmm. major players. I in, usually drag you yeah. out. To, not really not even. I, I like coming. Yeah, but... You wouldn't show up if it weren't for me asking. You didn't, like, at, you just offered for me to show yeah, up. I, I, I mean, I really wanted you to show, and I kept, like... Oh, you didn't... I didn't get that. But... I, I just went, I was like, that sounds cool, I guess, and yeah, I showed up. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't think of it as, like, oh, please come. <laughs> no, I wanted you to come because I feel like the lame to cool guy ratio... It's not that bad, surprisingly. Yeah, yeah, see, I had a bad, like, mindset of it, because, um... I had a bad mindset of it before I actually started, like, playing more and more. And I realized that there's a lot more cooler people than I expected. Mm-hmm. So I was trying to get, like, a lot more friends I had outside of Smash come with me. Right. So I wouldn't be bored. And I figured you'd be, like, a good fit for it. Just because I think you're, like... And I feel like just with the scene overall, I feel like you just blend in really well with it. Yeah. I might be probably one of the lesser socially awkward people there, but they're not, like, weird. They're di- they're just there's, like oh, there, there's they defi- just there's definitely the weird people yes there are but they're not the ones to talk you mm-hmm. know what I mean they're just there they're kind of just like the background characters yeah and they all and now most of the people who are like I would say like the main people in the scene like know me and it's weird mm-hmm. I don't know if they know me by name but they definitely know me as the guy who commentated yeah no um uh, I don't I wouldn't say I've, I've mentioned you a few times but I've definitely introduced you to a lot of people in like the boon scene. Because yes. I, 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 I knew you'd, like, I wouldn't say, like, click, but I knew you'd fit in, like, totally. I think, as I've mentioned to you, pri- not privately, but off of this, obviously. Um, <laughs> off the record. Off the record, totally. <laughs> uh, it's just, I don't think competitive gaming is for me. Like, I know you said, like, I have, like, oh, some skill. It's just, like, I don't have that much, I have, like, fun, like, oh, like, dicking around, but competitions, I just don't have that much fun. I mean, that's fair. And, but I, I like the scene, like, I do actually kind of like being somewhat involved with it so um and i mentioned you know i i I commentated one of the last tournaments and like i genuinely enjoyed that yeah no you did a really good job that's why i was really glad i like i you decided to do that because i knew it's fun yeah i knew that'd be like up your alley like out of everything like a smash scene i feel like commentating would be your best and I, I remember I showed you the picture of the group chat and how everybody was like who who is that guy with pete oh my god (laughs) i'm not even kidding i definitely uh uh, on the record, I totally free. I didn't, I wasn't like, oh my god, the famous people know me. But I was just like, oh, they, ne- they like, don't hate me. Yeah. And, like, and like, the group chat is like the big, I, I would argue like, they're definitely the ones who are much more. It's definitely the the faces of the Boone, the Boone scene. Smash community, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it's good that they're like, so, you know. Um, I mentioned on um, Cameron's episode, episode two of like, um, I think the reason why there's less personally, I I, I don't know from experience because I wasn't around in like 2006 of like when like video game competitions were like a thing. But like, I think video games were very much seen as like a nerdy thing. They, they still are. They still are, but they're definitely more like, um, like acceptable. They've definitely been blowing up a lot more in the casual market because of like a bunch of different things. I would say one of the biggest ones for competitive gaming itself 
is uh, ESPN being more and more willing to show... Um, esports. Esports, yeah. Um, I remember um, staying up one night to watch Street Fighter Five Grand... Or Street Fighter Five Top 8 at Evo on ESPN, watching it on TV. Wow. Yeah. Um, the, just the fact that they're willing to give it that coverage and uh, more and more people are investing, like um, Shaquille O'Neal and uh, people wow. like that like investing money into esports oh wait I heard about that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. The, it's like people are just slowly but surely realizing it because esports is usually pushed away as just an idea of like it's just a video game like there's no skill involved but <sighs> the the mentality the mind games how much work and progression you need to make in order to play at that level is insane because it it mirrors sports a lot like I, I of course I'm no expert in what to compare it for yeah. but what you have to gain to win is pretty much the same. It's mentality. a competition. Yeah, it's a competition. And how many things you have to do, like how many like clicks per second you have to do, like oh, a bu- buttons per second for games like StarCraft and like League of Legends is insane. Frame data is like, <laughs> oh my god, that's like, like imagine having like a boner for esports. What kills mine is fucking the word frame data. Frame, the, ugh, I hate that. Ugh. It's, so, it's just like, that's the one thing, like, that's another reason, because, like, I don't care about that sort of thing. It's, like, it's interesting to, like, hear about people, like, getting it, you know, like, oh, here's, like, I've analyzed the shit out of that video. This, that, this move is frame four. Yeah, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. But, like, it's interesting. I'm, like, you know, like, that one person, when I was at Other James's, with the Super Mario, the Super Mario 64 dude. Oh, the half like, A press thing. It was so. Okay, I'm not gonna. <laughs> we'll, I will give the very short narrow. Basically, right. someone analyzed the crap out of the Super Mario 64 and like basically like broke its code. Ba- basically, trying to beat a level without pressing the A button, instead of relying on half A presses and using <laughs> and using the game CPU to go to alternate dimensions. Which. I'm not even... You can just search that up. It's, but a, like, it's a whole thing, and it, the best part about it is he's just entirely serious. <laughs> With a straight face, he says, we're going to alter dimensions in the game. Yeah. And the fact that he believes that there's a thing as a half A press. It, it, it's like, it's it's laughable, but it was also like, okay, like, that it's requires... Like not, not, not only... Not a dedication. Yeah, not only dedication, but, like, brain power. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? I don't, I didn't get shit. I got lost, like, four times in it. Like... <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is he talking about? And then, like, no, I think no, I remember. Dude, I, my favorite part is just when, when they keep stacking on the bullshit, oh like, um, using the scuttlebug to, like, warp somewhere, like, get through the wall and yeah. stuff like that. You just go, what? And it's like, now using the, our game to quant of CPU speed, we're going to go to an alternate dimension. You're just like, what? I literally was like, I was like, about to mention, I was like, y'all, it was you, Colin, and other James. They've laughed way too hard at me when he just goes like the word alternate dimensions i was like excuse me i was like what did he just say like alternate dimensions what the fuck anyways um yeah social uh i i've 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 genuinely like um so i mentioned before i was like oh we're gonna have a big chunk i knew a chunk of this would be competitive video games because that's just me what i know james especially for but i know for other things but you know um and i mentioned it it was literally my last person I beat. So, like, it's kind of funny that I mentioned it. Um, I'm going to be taking a documentary class uh, because, long story short, I ha- I'm not going to mention it because I'm not letting anyone steal my idea, but I have a really good idea for What's a documentary. What's your idea? Um, well, the, a different documentary, a t- which I'm not, that's all I'm not going to talk about. But the documentary class uh-huh. that I'll be taking, cross my fingers, um, first semester next year, uh, you have to do, it, it sounds like it's like a, almost like a semester project. You yeah. have to do an ongoing documentary, and I'm like, I'm totally gonna do the. I think I had a, I think I had a friend who did that class. It looks fun, mm-hmm. um, and you can do. It, it, it's one of my it's one of my gen ed requirements, but I don't think I'm gonna take that class. Oh, you're I, in that I, same. I, yeah, taking stories. We yeah. T- uh, have you taken any other ones? I took narrative and media and gaming. That class sucks. Don't take it. I was gonna take. What what sucks about it? It's nothing. It's it's it, I I can show you all my assignments. They're boring, and I don't like. Well, I, I actually kind of like the professor. I just didn't like her lesson plans. I feel like I'm gonna take it. Fine, I mean... No I mean, yeah, there's not really much to talk about on the podcast, but I feel like I'm just going to say, fuck you, and I want to do it. Right. You can't stop me. I, stop. I, can't can't stop me. No, I actually have handcuffs. I'm chaining him to the chair right now. <laughs> you can't st- I will break these cuffs. Break these chains. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but I'm going to take the documentary class, and I want to do an ongoing thing, and I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm totally going to do the boon scene. 
I think I think I'm gonna do that. Because... Um, someone someone interviewed me for their capstone project. Is that what that was for? Yeah, so I, I didn't know what it was for originally, but after um, I had a second interview with them, and they just like, asked me some like pretty vague questions, which was hard to talk about. Like, oh, tell me about frame data and hitboxes, <laughs> and I was just like, uh, well, how fast do we, like you just give them like the most like textbook definition I could think of because it's just like very weird thing to explain to someone like in the documentaries like oh so is the, wait no wait did they do my idea it was a capstone pro- I mean I you can that is. capstone is like for the graduation project oh they're probably my major yeah probably the broadcasting major yeah. interesting I mean I feel like you can just do a better thing because you're actually in the community I had no idea who those two people were yeah well they clearly must have had some connection like why would they choose I had no idea I, I literally have never seen that guy around he just showed up for this, like, weird, like, fundraiser tournament. I guess that's, like, what motivated him or something. Or maybe his whole thing is because, like, App State has, like, a whole esports thing itself. Is it, we, have, we have, like, an Overwatch team. What? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I think it's either Overwatch or League. But we do have one of those. I used to play I want to get a jersey. They want to give me, they, they're like, yeah, the, the person who's ahead of, like, the head of, like, the game. Smash. The game, just the game stuff oh. in general, I think. Um, was like, yeah, dude, we should totally get some jerseys, but who do I, because the, the Caps ate, and I feel like one reason why I got really, I worked better to get the game, I worked better to get good at the game, was uh, because my ego would have been really upset if I wasn't chosen to get a jersey. I was going to say, it's all about that jersey. Oh, 100%. Um, I'm it, very, yeah. very much an egotistical person. Um, about jerseys. I feel like, I, I just in general, I feel <laughs> like, I feel like one reason why I suck at Smash is God trying to put me You're in. You're not that bad. Well, I'm not first place good. Okay. But imagine, like, imagine me and my ego. If I got first place, God's putting me down like the positive way. God's not letting God me get. God said, "Heck you." Yeah, God's like, "No, you'd be too strong." Like, imagine, <laughs> imagine how I would be if I was actually confident. I'm man. laughing at you, but I get it. Yeah, <laughs> be like, "Oh shit! All this hundred dollars? Shit! I'm about to spend it all on." Hundred dollars? What do you mean? Like tournament money. Oh. Yeah. Get the big. Get the big money. That is pretty big money. Yeah. I mean, you play a video game and you get a hundred bucks. <laughs> I mean, you exert yourself and like put physical force. Yeah, it's all. I mean, it takes a while because like tournaments usually take about like six hours. Like that poor guy, that poor sixteen year old. God. Oh my god, I kind of felt bad. For no, him. no, that that is. Just, I don't think he was used to it. He was PR'd in Hawaii. Smash Four. He's been playing this game for a while. He was here. Uh, he moved. I don't know. I don't know his, I don't know his life story. Well, still, I he, mean, I felt he, bad for him. He is a complainer. He was still. He was sixteen. So I was fucking fourteen when I started playing this game. I, I will defend a child. He is a he, young adult. He is a me like not me. He's a good. He's a friend of mine. I I like. I'm good friends with him. But like, from a competitive from a, a competitor viewpoint, there's a time to complain about shit. But when the whole time you're talking to me of just about how tired you got when playing our set and shit like that, that's all you talk about. Like yeah. he, it's just not being able to handle like your loss. Like people, people lose. Like oh, I missed a, a kill move. I missed that, or I just kept getting hit by the same thing. You realize that, and you just gotta accept it. Uh, that's what you gotta do to move on. Some people have a hard time doing that, and that's the you 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 didn't see him complain to me the first time. No, I didn't. Um, I guess I was like the cause of both times. Um, so, um, this is the competitive player named Spirit. Uh, never, Shout him out. He's never gonna, like, watch this, I guess. But, um... <laughs> it'll come back to you. Yeah, I'll talk to you. The world goes round. Um, <laughs> but, um, we had to play in doubles. Uh, me and Phil versus him and his, uh, teammate, Roman, or Nate. Um, they had to, we had, um, they just made a really hard loser's run. Oh, yeah. They, they beat, like, everybody who was placed above them. We are like, the actual, like, really... I commentated this. Yeah, really good teams. And then um, we were on the winner's side, and we had to play them on the loser's side. And they had to do a pretty hard bracket run, which is understandable to be, like, tired, because you just got to, like, every match was, like, 2-1, 2-1, 2-1. So it wasn't, like, a wash. You didn't, like, smack everybody no. in the bracket. So we had to play them, and they get a bracket reset on us. Um, it was, it was I think it was 3-2 for the bracket reset. Like, uh, we, almost, we almost won the whole set. Which basically means since they climbed through the loser's bracket and then beat them originally in the first bracket. Yeah. They had to do another one to like settle the score. To even it. So we're yeah. back the losers. So so if and if so if the losers, the other side, had won again, they'd win the tournament. Or and and then, well they would reset the bracket and then they had to play again because now we're both they did reset the bracket yeah, on us. After the bracket. So we had to set. so we had to play the second bracket. Mm. Uh, the bracket set. The second set. But um yeah, so right. um we lose me and Phil lose like a pretty hard two V one because it was um 
Spirit at full health, and then me and Phil were both at like a hundred, so one hit away from dying each yeah. episode. Um, and I die first, or no, I think Phil dies first, and then I die. And after I die, he goes, "Yes!" He stands up and like fucking like pops off. And me and Phil, since we're used to this kind of thing, we're just like, "Oh, he's popping off." That wasn't even that cool. We're just like, we're just like keep because cool heads get out of hot situations. All right, motto I live by. All right, me and me and Phil are just like, yeah. Yeah, bring, bring it in, pal. That's what you, Yeah, yeah, sure. You, um, you, yeah, because like, well, yeah, how would you feel if you just, like, lost something? So it, like, stands up and goes, yes! Well, I kind of feel like... I get... No, we I don't. get it, because no, it's just like, oh, Phil, my God, finally. Yeah, no, yes. me, me and Phil get that, but, like, from a competitive standpoint, we're like, if he's willing to pop off that hard Wait, and, so only, and, only, that. and only finish half the job... You've already you've already let go of like the because I feel like when you play competitively you gotta mm. bottle up your intentions and when you let go like when you when you unscrew the bottle let the like your intentions your motivation come out your and, focus goes away yeah you when once you've already thought yourself to be the victor like the winner that's when you lose because right. you get overconfident you really like you just like you exert yourself too hard you you go too fast to, uh, like you know. You go too fast. So he popped off, and me and Phil were just like, okay, cool, whatever. He's popping off. That, that means we're going to have an easier time. We didn't, we didn't say it like that. We didn't say I, it like I that. I got it. But we were just like, okay, okay, okay. He, just, he's popped off. Yeah, just don't, just don't let it get to us. If he's going to exert himself like that, then he's on his, like, last last limb. And uh, we we win we win the bracket reset 3-1, and then we we won. We get our money, and me and Phil are joking around because they play a really annoying team. So I'm like, Phil... Heroes win in the end. I, I remember you saying that. I was like, oh, my God. I, I, I thought it was cool. Um, I really thought it was cool. Uh, <laughs> you were like, hell yeah. You but the whole time after the tournament, which is like, that was the first thing. There was still like three, four hours left in the tournament. Oh, my he was, God. He was just like, man, that was such a good set. But like, I was so tired. I just exerted myself so hard. And it just like, it was a good set, though. But just, God, I've never been that tired in my life. You just kept going on and I don't like he just keeps talking to me for like an hour and he's a nice guy so I don't mind it but you know there's always those people like who just talk too much and you don't mean you don't have anything against them it, <laughs> hello well, that's me <laughs> you don't have a thing against them and just, they just do that they just keep talking and you know you don't want to be mean and you don't mind but like you wish you could talk to other people and he just kept talking to me about how exhausted he was about the set and I'm just like yeah you did good though don't worry about it man and he's just like, yeah, we did pretty good for our first team. Like, we, we've never teamed before. Look how far we made it. But, dang, I was so exhausted. Like, that was just, oh. like, you, know, you see what I, you see why I'm, like, my I just couldn't tell because you looked exhausted. Oh, I mean, I was exhausted, too. I literally was shaking. Um, you know, it's hard to, like, when it's that neck and neck for $40. Like, $40. Yeah. It's pretty scary. Um, <laughs> but that was the second time. The first time, uh, I had to play him in singles, me versus him. Yes, I remember that. Um, game one, I got my ass clapped. Um, I had to go from my doubles mindset, which is just go crazy, go stupid, uh, mm -hmm. um, into, like, being actual, like, smart and not falling in dumb shit. Mm -hmm. And the character he made, he made Snake, is uh, a character where, like, you do something dumb, you're literally either going to die or eat, like, 100% for it. Like, you can't make mistakes against the character. You're playing a whole different game when you're playing a Snake. And I lose game one horribly because I'm, like, not in a mindset. Game, like, I, I guess I took game one as, like, an omen. I'm like, okay, this is what's going to happen if I don't improve. I go to a stage, and I start kicking his shit in. Like, I'm, I'm starting to, like, realize what I'm doing. I'm not letting him, like, land. I'm just punishing him very well. Uh, game three, it turns into, like, last stock, last hit. Like, very close, mm -hmm. neck and neck. Like, I take his stock, he takes mine. Um, then it's, like, down to the down to the wires. He puts me off stage and decides to edge guard me with Nikita, which if you've never played Smash, Nikita's a um, self-guided missile that you control. Oh, his side special. Yeah, it's super fast, and it invalidates half the cast because of how fast and how much damage it does. So if you can't recover in time, you just get hit by it and you die. There's nothing you can do about it. You have to recover, and he can hit you while you're recovering, so you just die. Um, and it was a pretty much a freebie. I thought it was over for me. Um, I was off stage. Nikita was coming. I jumped below. And I, he just misses it. I, 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 I was literally still confused. Like I was he like, fumbled. I was literally like, this is just like amateur hour. I get on the ledge, I roll on the ledge, and apparently he had the read. Like he knew I was gonna do it, but he uh, up tilted, which is another one of Snake's really strong oh. moves. It's super fast and it'll kill you super early. If you landed it, it would have killed me. But apparently he did it the wrong way, and I landed right, and I rolled right behind him. So he was just still, he was ending the move, mm -hmm. and I got an F smash, and I was like, wow, I did it. Like cool. And he was just like, "Dart, dude, that's gonna that that choke. I choked so hard." He did choke. He did, but like th just the whole day, he's just like, "I choked so hard. Oh, that's gonna haunt me." Like he literally said, 
that choke is going to haunt me in my dreams. And I was like, cool, dude. Um, I didn't want to be mean, but I could have said, like, what what did you think, like, game one of me versus you was? Like, I literally just dropped the ball. But you don't see me going, like, oh, dude. I guess it's because he won. I mean, he probably wouldn't be mentioning it if he had won it. Oh, like, oh, I choked on the second round or whatever. So, it, it's just, I, it, I get it. But I, I totally, I, I also understand that it can be annoying. But personally, I totally understand just, like, oh, if I hadn't done this, you know, we can always. And it's a pretty bad, it's a pretty bad, like, thing to have happen to you. When right. you lose, like, when you literally go, I literally lost because of this one thing. But to be the better person and better player you just got to accept it because if you just keep fumbling, um, I live like, I, I, I have a, like a lot of stupid, like philosophical things I live by. And uh, one thing I like saying to myself a lot, especially when I play competitively, right. so I'm a competitive person. Um, it's better not to think about winning and losing. And cause that stuff keeps you up at night. Just focusing on doing is what's more important. So if I lose, I accept it cause I didn't do it right. And if I win, I did it right. I don't have to, I shouldn't be focusing on, one of the means because I got to get to that. Yeah. And, um, I feel like that's a very destructive habit to have when you focus on the, either the good ending or the bad ending. Yeah. It's all like, you know, it's the journey that matters, I guess. <laughs> like, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm a pretty like humble person. I take wins. Um, like it was really funny. I feel weird. Just to, I, I always feel weird just talking about smash because you're fine. Yeah, no, no, I, I know. It's just, it's just always weird for me. Um, but I, I won, uh, since the PR released, I have a win. Well, of course, the record, the whole record, he's, um, I'm losing, yes, because he's like 2-1. But I have a win on number two on the PR. Oh. Uh, uh, his name's Lazy Boredom. He's a Falco main. Uh, he goes to, he goes to our, our tournament in Wilmington, okay, uh, FNS, a lot. And I have a win on him, and I thought it was the funniest thing. Because um, I played friendlies with him once. Friendlies are just casual matches, nothing competitive about him. And he was beating me, but I, I was just like... I know why he's beating me. It's not because of the character. It's just because he knows what he's doing, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. So as long as I can overcome, like, that goal and abuse the character and just not let him play better than me, like, beat me as a person, I can win. And um, I have to play... And I, I get pretty lucky because he was trying to play a new character. He was trying to learn another character. Because uh... he, he, he mains Falco, which is, which is, like, a mid-tier at best, not a high-tier character. He has The character has some flaws, a really good combo game and like certain like really oh a lot God. of like good tools, but like a lot of the things are just neutral, not that good at best. Besides just his good combo game and some other things. Um, so he was trying to pick up another character and he was playing Krom, and his Krom's not even bad. His Krom like had some other pretty good wins at that tournament. I think I think he beat, I think he beat another person in the PR number twelve. I think he beat number twelve in the PR. Uh, Curtis, which also they go to the same tournament together, they, they drive together all the time because they're from the same place. Right. Um, he's beaten him with Krom before. And uh, I had to fight his Krom, and it was pretty bad the first game. Like, the first game, I, like, I, I wouldn't say I got my shit kicked in, but it was definitely like not that close. I realized I played a little bit better and realized what I should have been doing because I made, like, you know, of course, realizing bad habits is a good thing to adapt. So I, I kind of cut off those bad habits and started playing better, like, stop rolling into them and just letting them get free hits or just stop committing to, like, moves that make me have a lot of end lag so I don't get punished. Doing things like that. So I um, so it's 1-1 at this point. Uh, best 2 out of 3, so whoever wins the next game wins. Um, and then he switches off. He switches off Krom to go to Falco, his actual main. Right. And I'm, I'm like, okay, okay, this is the real deal, but I, I'm 100% confident. Like, I know I'm, I'm, I'm not confident I can w- I, I'm going to win. I just know I'm confident I can win. Okay. And I have to play him, and it's pretty back and forth. Uh, nothing bad happens. Like we just like it's just a just a game. And as we're playing, I'm just like seeing the neutral. Like I'm seeing like what he has to get in neutral to beat me. Neutral's just playing the game. Uh, I see because like he has to grab me. That's how he gets his all his combo started. He has to grab me, and if I can dodge or shield or just be ready and react to his uh, uh like linear approach options, I can punish. Right. So when it came to like the last stock, I was at a pretty def. I was. I think I was at a deficit. I don't remember exactly. Cause I don't really like thinking about like my. I don't really like thinking about something like that. Big. You're good. But um, I remember like I was at like a deficit, but it was pretty close. And for the last stock, I just didn't let him get me. I just kept dodging and punishing him accordingly. And then I got it like the way I wanted. I felt bad about because it's like a cheesy win. Um, he whiffed a move, and I managed to land my uh, dan- uh my double edge dance which is Roy's side B that has really insane kill power. Like, how strong it is is pretty 
obnoxiously good. Like, it's insanely busted. But it's a terrible move because it has a huge amount of end lag, so if you just block it, you F smash me. So it's, I think it's fair. But tomato, tomato. Okay. Mm. Everybody's opinions are known. I'm biased because I play the character. Obviously. Um, but he whiffs something, and I managed to land a Dancing Blade, and he's at like 60%, which is pretty low. Um, he's on like he's like below the battlefield platform, so not that far away from the like so close to the edge. Close to the close to the edge, not too far from the blast zone, like a decent lane. And I dancing blade or double edge dance, whatever stupid name. Gotcha. Um, I, I land the killing version of it, like I get the hell. So the far I, I get yeah, I get the sweet spot on it, and it kills him at like eighty. He just dies, <laughs> and I was just like, wow. I was like, I was even I was just surprised a little bit because that was really early, and I was just like, I did it, like you know, I, I didn't feel like I. I feel like I did something good, but I don't feel like I, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Intrinsic satisfaction. In it. Yeah, I'm happy I did it, but because you weren't expecting it yeah, either. I'm happy I did it, but I'm not going to be like insanely proud of it because you know he's my friend and he beats the shit out of me all the time. So you know, just one win out of the whole set of losses this is nothing to be brag about. God. But I'm happy I could I could do it. Like I was happy I could do it. And um, after I win, apparently everybody in the tournament was watching our set, and they just start clapping for me. Oh, God. And I was, I was just, like, I was taken aback, because I wasn't, I was just, like, I was happy I did it, but I'm not, like, pre- like I'm not, like, freaking out about right. it. Because I, I don't really, I'm not really one to freak. I joke about it a lot with my friends, like, I'll do one, I'm going to pop off. I, I do, like, the Armadas, like, pop off, which is, like, screaming. <laughs> like, oh, that dude. Like, flex, flexing my arms and screaming as loud he as I can. big arms. He's a cool guy. Um, I, I love the melee scene. I wish I could like meet those people. I think I think like the melee figureheads are some really cool people. Um, yeah, I was like just really happy about it. And I totally had no like idea of popping off of mine. I was just like, yeah, I, like a little small little happy fist. I did it. And when I turned around, I was like, good job, James. Like clapping. And I was just like, th- like I was just like taken aback because I didn't like everybody was just so happy to watch me. And then I of course I had a few of my competitive friends like, wow, thanks James for putting him in the losers bracket. Now who, now what do I gotta do? Like they have to play him now. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was funny. It's just that's just a good feeling, I guess. It is, it is weird. I, I'm not. Obviously, I can't really relate. I used to play. Um, Mario Kart is very different in competitive scene. It it works. It's a team based. It's team based normally. Really? Um, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Well, at least back when I used to play. Uh, what's the, how does it work like teams? All right. Um, you get. Uh, uh, well, okay. It really sucks because there's no like. T- I, well, on Mario Kart Wii, I think there was, but I don't think they do it anymore with. Red- no, I think that maybe they do. They don't do it online, uh, and we did it online because. Yeah, um, I don't really know any scene. I did it when I was like twelve, so um, and I was like, decent, but I got. 12 year old like pissy so like sometimes like I'd be in second place and like my teammate would be first and I'd red shell his ass that was not smart um but okay um it works by clans I don't even think they do them anymore but like I think you're still like 12 year old pissy yeah oh no but like vindictive I'm not vindictive anymore I am not vindictive are you no very vindictive response I can. That is not a vindictive response. A vindictive response is like I, I can be like bitter. Sounds like something a vindictive person. Would I say. can be bitter. It's not a vindictive response. I would. I know what vindictive is. I can be bitter, but I don't take it out on people. I kind of. Do you? I bottle it up too much. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll say I'll talk big. No, smack. no, no. You're. you're I'll right. talk big schmack, but I don't do anything about it. Yeah, especially behind people's backs. I know what you're doing. I've stopped. <laughs> have you? Yes, I have. <laughs> Anyways, uh, but so but what they do is you have like t- teammates and like online you have like your little clan marker marked, and I don't even know if they do this anymore. It's been a really long time, um, but you have your little clan marker on. So like when you're playing was online, this for, just wondering, was marker this for, seven. Was this for money? Like, no. what was the prize? Winning, getting clout. It was like I mean it was like a small community on Mario Kart the Mario Kart Wii forums. The only thing I knew it was like. Mario Kart 64 had a pretty cool competitive scene. It did. Yeah, I know Peach is the best character in the game. She is. Um, <laughs> and Mario Kart 7 game. Metal Mario was. And then some people played as, I think... Funky Kong? No, that's Wii. Oh, Wii. Oh, yeah, sorry. I missed that one. Um, Daisy? Something? I know Funky Kong is the best character in the game. In Wii, yes. On the Flame Runner bike. I didn't play Wii because I hated its controls. I don't blame you. Um, but, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much how it worked. And then uh, it you'd, uh, you'd, like, average up the scores, so, like... First place, oh, oh god, oh, it's been a little long, long, longer, but you know, your team got, you'd, you'd take an average, so if your team got 
say like the say one clan or whatever got one person in first, but the last the other people are sixth, seventh, eighth, the other team would win, I think. I, I sort of see what you mean. Because they got the average higher gain. Yeah. Um and you do it by I don't remember how course selection worked. It was it's not like how it is in like Smash Brothers where it's like some are legal and some aren't. It's anything goes. Well, that makes more sense because like Mario Kart stages are all like I guess crazy standard. Yeah, they they're all like There's no all, there is no standard. Yeah, they yeah, cuz Smash there's stages that are equal and their stages are just random like are like nobody has a like someone has a clear advantage. Yeah. <laughs> Plus that is all muscle memory. Yeah. You have to know that course like the back of your hand. Most, um, I think for Mario Kart 8, even, I know those courses, like, like back of my hand. I'll still flub up some of the shortcuts, like, on Ice Ice Outpost. I fucking hate that course because it. it's awful. Because the, only, the, only, the shortcuts are with slippery shit, so the drifting works differently, and I'm not. I'm still not adjusted to it. The only, the only Mario Kart map I will ride or die be good at is um, Rainbow Road in Mario Kart 64. I don't like that. I no, because the only the only Mario Kart game I actually like was sixty four. Sixty four. Um, I used to play it with my cousin all the time. Like we would just play. It was me versus him, and he just usually would beat the shit out of me. Like not physically, but he'd just be better than me. But we we like we'd play like just one v one like Rainbow Road for like three hours like a day, just trying to see who'd beat each other. And it's just it's grueling in that game because it's way lo- like it's like a three minute fucking lap. <laughs> Yeah, and because and Mario Kart Eight, they just shorten it to one big ass track. But yeah, back then it's like I think it's like seven minutes to do the whole thing. Yeah. No. So so like once you have like a big lead, it's just it's over. It's kind of ugly looking and too. I love no. Don't even don't even say that to me. Don't, don't say that. To I also me. don't like its music. Podcast I just don't like over. I, also I have don't. had it. I have had it. The best you're, Rainbow Road. You're is- telling me Koopa Troopa Beach, the best stage of Mario Kart history. Is it's only in Mario Kart 64? No, it's not. It. It's in Mario Kart 7. And I liked how they remixed it. It's in Mario Kart 7? Yeah. It's not in Mario Kart 7. Wait, no, it's not. I would know. Koopa Trooper Beach from uh, Mario 64. What's it? Mario Kart 64? Absolutely, yeah. What's it called? Koopa Trooper Beach. Maybe it's, oh, I think they shortened it to Koopa Beach. Wait, what's... What, 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 what? Mario Kart 8 is the most recent one. Yes, Mario Kart 7 was on the 3DS. Oh, okay, yeah. I was a little mixed up. Okay, I don't, I don't care about 3DS. I didn't. I only care about the well, real. I'm just I, don't, saying, I only care about the real ones. I'm just saying that's what was. No, you're right. You're, I was wrong. I just don't care. Okay. Yeah. Me. <laughs> um. But that was that's my experience in competitive. And I and I kind of liked it, but like I don't even know if they still do that sort of thing. You know, like I, it's been ages. People play. I've like, gone through like six online usernames since then. Damn. Went from Yeeter to P. I don't use that. You didn't use that? I've or? always been very, um, well, I've always been, like, really careful with my online, um. I always just go by the same thing that I use in tournaments. I go by male kids. I'm talking, well, I'm, in, like, online communities, yeah, I don't no, give out a- any names. I, I'll give them, like, my first name, that's it. I used to not give out my first name. In fact, I still do, um, I don't do online shit anymore, honestly. No, neither do I. Since I since I went to college, I don't really use um, social media. I used like to I did. be like very socially lonely, so like was I. like middle school. So I kind of just have like a whole group of online friends that I always be with. But come like seventh, eighth grade, I was like, I should actually just meet people. And then um, I started hanging out with Phil, and uh, Aww. here we are. Well, here I am. <laughs> I, I um, had. No friends in middle school. Well, I had like some friends, but um, I I, I just felt like I had to like, I feel weird to describe how I say because I'm very much the way I describe it's pretty like emo. No, um, mine was emo. I felt like I was just a very dumb kid. Like um, I don't want to say the word I'm thinking. Ah, of. I'm, I'm not a the, gamer word. Not the R word, the A word. Um, oh. Oh, my mom told me she thought I was autistic. I th- see. I thought I was autistic when I was really young. Yeah, but like my mom, what the fuck? What? <laughs> my mom just goes like, "Oh, you- I'm sorry, I didn't I didn't say the story. I was I was still getting driven to work because I was literally just about to get my driver's license and whatever uh-huh. and start doing driving. And she's just like, tur- I'm literally like pulling up to work, and she goes, "You know, I think you have Asperger's syndrome." And I was Whoa. like, <laughs> but I, I, <laughs> "Okay, mom." I never like. Sorry. Oh, no, no, you're fine. My okay. experience with autism. Yeah, that's, that's cool. No, I always felt like I was autistic. Like, you look back. 
Yeah. Or even back then. I mean, even now, I feel like, I, I feel like on my, since it's like a spectrum, there's different degrees of it. And as a whole picture, I feel like everybody has their own percentage, like, not a bit of autism. But I get it. bit of, like, something, like, odd about them. Everybody's weird in their own right. Idiosyncratic tendencies. Yeah. Whatever that is. Uh, <laughs> it's that. <laughs> um, I feel like I was autistic growing up, because, like, um... Because you definitely can, I wouldn't say, like, you can socially develop it, like, you can be born with it, or you can, like, I'm pretty sure that's a thing, where, like, you can develop the disorder from just, like, being neglected. I don't know. I would say, like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure, I'm not really saying He's not making a statement, you're just saying, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I'm just saying, like, I felt like I had a lot of, like, the symptoms, like, the thing, like, the, what... Oh. I, like, I felt, like, related to it a lot, like, I... I might have not had it, but I definitely acted like I like had it. Like if you ever meet someone with autism, the way they act and stuff like that, um, nice people and all that. I'm not saying like I know I don't want I don't want to mean this like any bad way. No, I just felt like like the 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 tendencies they had, the ways I did. Because I was very much a digital person. I was always online, which is a thing. Those kind of like those people. Many have. autistic people are. Yeah. And I, I once again I don't mean anything bad about it. No. It's just totally like that's I totally felt one to one with it. Like, I totally wouldn't be surprised if I had it. I never checked or anything. But, like, if I did, I'd just be like, wow. I'm not surprised, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. You just feel like, you know, you just feel like you might, like, you just, you match with it. And I felt like that kind of, like, realization, I wouldn't say, like, like realization, but like, coming, like, coming to terms, I was like, I do a lot of this, these are really negative in my life. Um, I need to stop depending on people, like, online. I need to just get away from it. Because, um... I felt, if it's another weird thing, I wouldn't say it's a bragging thing, but I felt like I was ahead of the curve on some things. Like, I was really into, like, once again, to not help my case, but I was really into manga and anime when I was in elementary school. Yeah, that is pretty early, even for my age. Yeah, I was, like, I would read, I read up to, like, volume 70 or 60 of One Piece before sixth grade. And you don't, you don't have any older siblings, do you? I have a sister. Was she into that sort of thing? No. Okay, because, like, I know the only kids I knew who were into it, like, by, like back in elementary school is, like, my older brother was into that sort of thing. Um, I would watch, like, Toonami as a kid. Like, I'd watch, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. That, actually, it's cool. Because, um, you know, I'm a little... But it's kid. not the same thing. Yeah. Like, it's getting into it. Yeah, but I would actually, like, my parents would take me to, like, the bookstore, and I would literally go buy manga. Yeah, that, I, that, that's pretty odd. I had a lot of manga before, like, even seventh grade. And I would read it. Like, I was ahead of the curve on One Piece for, like, four years. Like, people would be like, oh, yeah, dude, this just happened in the anime. And, like, seventh grade, I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, that does happen. Like, I'm, like, ahead of it. And it feels weird because, like, now everybody's pa- like everybody's into One Piece now. Like, I-, I had a lot of friends. Some of them may or may not have been stoners. Um, Probably. I had a lot of friends in high school who watched One Piece, super into it, watched One Piece, read One Piece. And they would just talk to me about it, but I I wasn't into it anymore. I was just like, oh yeah, I sort of remember like that part, but I not I did not read that far ahead. Like it's a, I get it. It's a long. There's over a thousand chapters. Oh my god. Yeah, it's a very long. There's over a thousand episodes of the show oh too. Oh my god. Yeah, it's a very long show, and it's just very weird to think about. Like I was into that when I was a kid, and now it's just a pop. It's like a phenomenon. Like it's just a that's just a pop culture thing now. And, of course, I'm still into, like, watching anime. I'll read some manga. But just, like, it just feels weird to know that I was doing that when I was, like, fucking, like, before I was 14. I, well, I mean, I guess I was kind of into video games and stuff. But my my digital thing came out, like, I think I, I finally, like, broke out of it. Um, uh, because, well, A, I'm at college. Like, that helped. Because <laughs> in middle school, it was very obnoxious. I only had, and I only pretty much had girlfriends in high school, too. I only had, like, very, like, I had girlfriends. And, like, my friend, my, one of my friends gets bothered when I say it, but I'm like, it just is. It was bothersome to just have only girlfriends. It wasn't bothersome to have girlfriends. I can imagine that. Just only girl. It I mean, it's the same way for just having, like, dude friends. Yeah. Like, you can, it's only, it only worked, like, something for so long. So, um, in middle school, and I was very socially awkward, and I was flaming homosexual, um, I was so flaming. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. Um, and but like my little my little getaway was like the internet. But like I don't know. I went through a lot of circles of like negative behavior, and I made negative friends. Like these people. I mean, I guess I was kind of annoying. I said some stupid things, or just like some personally incendiary things, like purposefully incendiary things. So I get, but they like reacted 
way too negatively and like it still haunts me because like I mean like they literally all ganged up on me and and they shut me out of a like it was it was a big deal but then that uh, group fell apart so I was like serves y'all right I told y'all I, like, I've, I've had like social groups fall apart in front of me like I like like you know getting kicked out of like a social group is always like one of the worst feeling things it is traumatic it's happened to me twice I feel like one of the reasons like well, one of them was digitally like online mm-hmm. friends I feel like that was one kick, like, one, like, realization in my head that, like, I just can't rely on this, like, myself. Exactly. I need to find, like, actual people to be with. Yep. Which I started doing. Um, cause it was a whole, like, weird drama. I was really young. I was, like, 14, and my friends were, like, 19 online. I was that, too. Yeah. I, uh, when I started podcasting, I was 13, and, like, I think the youngest was, like, 16. And yeah. one of them, I think, was 19. Yeah, so, like, yeah, similar story. And, um, like, some stuffing happened, they, like, like I was more lonely online, and, like, you know, a lot of people would have different time zones, so I would just, would, like, so I would just have to stay up, which is very unhealthy, like, you know, one-sided relationships in a way, I guess. And I was just like, I, I am not happy, I need to, like, make other friends. So I decided just to fucking go with it, and I started talking to people, and I became more and more, I would, I would always say to myself when I was younger, I was, like, an inch, an introvert trying to be an extrovert i very much see that's like how i act a lot of the times i feel like i'm much more of an introverted person Mm -hmm. but i really really want to be an extrovert i get that i feel like nowadays it's even i feel like i'm much more of an extroverted person because i really like like, i'm tired of like what like like when it goes like when i was talking about like manga and stuff like that i did all that stuff when i was young i've had my share of it so, like, when people are like, oh, dude, let's play online games or something, like, I'll have, I have fun with it, but I'd rather ultimately be doing something else. I kind of grew, well, grew out of it. Like, I've always, I've always been very extroverted, but I was, both with my upbringing and just my interests and being a homosexual, um, I was always kind of forced into that introverted behavior. I don't like to be that person who, like, puts it on his sleeve, like, oh, that was gay. But, like, I was different and kids are mean. Like, yeah. you know, kids are mean. Like, no, being no, different is not no acceptable. One more, no one more cruel than school children. It really is. They're fucking assholes. They really are. Um, high school was different. High school, um, everyone kind of knew me, but I didn't make any friends for the most part. I did for the begin- the first half, and then <laughs> they all kind of fell off, and, and things just happened. I always had older friends, so, like, when oh, I was a senior similar. in high school, I didn't... Ha- I had, like, one, two friends, um, so... But, you know, I, I get having, like... Yeah, from awkward social tendencies. From me, even now. From now, from the start, from like elementary school up until like seventh grade, I really didn't have any friends. Um, I had like a few I, when I was really young, like elementary school. My cousin was probably like a couple years older. Maybe he was like sixteen when I was like ten or nine. That is really old. Yeah, he we'd we'd play video games a lot together, and that was like one of my like social out outlets because he was like because he lived down the road from me, so we just. And I feel like he would definitely be one of, like, the biggest, like, social, like, people I've ever had in my life, like, growing up like that, because I didn't have anyone else. And I, I had, a, I had like, a kind of, like, a, I wouldn't say, like, a bad relationship with a friend. Um, I, I had a friend, like, it was my friend, like, me and him were, like, he was my best friend from, like, 6th to 7th grade. And come around, like, 7th grade, I was, like, I should find someone better. I don't mean that in like a bad way, but just like I, it's obvious that like I'm not getting what I want out of it. Like I don't, I don't know. No, I get that. It's weird to phrase, but um, then I was like, I need to find other people and just match with more people. And I started talking to Phil and just meeting these kind of people. I met a whole group of friends and just starting from there, I just started being more open as a person, like talking. Because I, 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 I'm, I, I think I like in a lot of social groups, I'm, I'm rather silent. Like there's two co- there's two like coins like two sides of the coin for me a lot of the times like some social groups I'm like the silenter guy yeah I'm like the more silent guy who like will just say something when it's not need to be said like, like I'll join I'll pitch into conversation but I'm not the one like initiating like, plans or anything it. yeah I'm just there and then some other friend groups I'm like the king I would like king's very bold but I'm definitely like the guy who's like making the plans getting people together I see that a lot with um the Smash people, with you, mm-hmm. at least to me. Oh no, I, I think I am much more of an active guy in like the Smash community. Yeah. But, like here in the dorms, I'm much more like the quiet, reserved guy. I mean, no one's just one thing. Yeah, yeah, a hundred, no, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I just feel like it's always just weird to see. It's always weird to see yourself like, 
You, you, could, you could see, you're just like, that doesn't, that doesn't seem right. How can I be two different people? Yeah, yeah. Especially when you have more than, like, one social group you're a part of, and you're just, like, you're just a blend of all of them at different times. Yeah, I, I, I've had problems, like, all my life, like, figuring out, like, what I am socially, mm-hmm. and, and especially because in college, especially for a semester, it kind of petered out, but, like, like, I had a lot of groups to almost maintain, and, and it's still, you know, there's always that weird insecurity of, like, do these people really like me? Um, I, I yeah. 100% go through that a lot. Yeah. I feel like even now, like, I feel like I've always had it, but, like, recently more and more it becomes a problem. It's, like, commitment. Social commitment is such a hard thing to do with a bunch of people. Because I, I feel like I'm very modest and stuff. I don't like letting anyone down. But, like, mm-hmm. it's just very hard to find time for everybody when mm-hmm. you need time for yourself and, like, you don't want to let you don't want to step on any like toes. You you don't want to like hurt anybody with plans. yeah. <laughs> and you try like I don't mean like to say this like just being here for this podcast is like a commitment, but like there's other things I there's other people I let down in the sense to oh. do this. You know I feel bad. No, no I don't. Even. <laughs> yeah, because um I, it felt weird just to have a week where like all this shit just happened. Like like of course it's not that big, but it's like a lot of people just like oh you free you want to do something oh like um. Um, like Friday night, um, I had a friend that like, I asked a friend like, Oh, I, I know for a fact, I'm not doing anything as of right now. I'm not doing anything. Do you want to hang out? And he's like, yeah, sure. So I hang out with him. So I was going to hang out with him. And then I went to go hang out with some other people like, Oh yeah, we're going to go camping this weekend. Oh, do you want to like, I, they didn't they like, offer, they didn't offer, but like, I felt like if I asked, you know what I mean? Like it's one of those, like, you know, you could put yourself in. Okay. They went they, like, they don't like, they don't mind having you around. I was like, if I asked, I probably wouldn't have been like a no Unless, like, circumstances, like, oh, no one, not a big enough car or whatever. Right. So that was definitely, like, an like a outlier I could hang out. Uh, or, or I could, well, better phrase, I could have just hanged out with them on Friday before they went camping. I could have just hanged out with them. Um, I have another friend uh, texted me, like, I haven't talked to him in a while, so I felt bad because I was like, I need to hang out with this guy. I haven't hanged out with him in a while, but he's a good friend. He messaged me, he's like, hey, man, um, me and a few people are going to D- or gonna just try and do D&D. Do you want to join? And I'm like, yeah, 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 when? He's like, oh, we're trying to start doing it tonight. Like, uh, so I had, to, like, all these things to do, and I'm just bummed about it. Because, like, that happened, and then today I had a friend like, oh, dude, me and a few people are going to get together and just hang out at, like, 3. Do you want to come? Uh, and I was like, I, he asked me that, like, ahead of time, like, a longer, like, a longer time ago, like, Wednesday or something. Uh, and I just felt like I, I'm not really, I'm, it's really bad, like, committing to something. So I didn't want to, like, let him, like, say yes, that immediately turn, because, Maybe I'll get, like, a better offer. Maybe something else. So I was just like, maybe. Because I, I didn't even know if I had enough homework to do. I might, I might have had... I have, of course. I have homework to do. So, like, a lot of these different things. So I'll, I said, like, let you know. And then I'm on this podcast. Um, my friends still want to play D&D. Um, I, the Smash community group's, like, having a huge, like, Smash Fest coming together to play Smash. And I oh. can't... I can't do that because I have commitments. Oh. You know, it's just all, it's just all these th- things coming together. It's just, stressful i almost i know that sounds weird but like I, d- I definitely appear more social but i almost envy that because like i with my friends i know i got i have to talk to one of them about this not because i'm mad at them but like i literally have never been offered well i think i've been offered like once and like they consider me their friends it's just like i always i think so maybe maybe it's sometimes it's almost like they subconsciously like associate with me being the initiator of like let's do something i've always been that type i've always been very forward which mm-hmm. is can be intimidating to I a hate, lot of people. So like, I just don't... I, I, I have to go talk to them and be like... Hey. In, in Wilmington, I'm like... I have a similar idea of, like, that that idea. Just I'm not strong enough for that. In the sense of, like... I feel like in, like, a lot of my friend groups in Wilmington, I might not be, like, the lo- like the loud, outgoing one, but I usually end up being... having to be the initiator. Like, my friends, like, won't do anything unless I ask. Now, I yeah. don't get asked. And a lot of the times, I usually just, like... I'm not willing to ask. I'm like, I guess anxious would be a word for it. I'm like very anxious about it, so I usually never ask. And I usually feel bad about it because I know they're like not doing anything. And yeah. Like, if I ask, they would say yes. But if they are doing something and they say no, I'm just like, what was the point of like going out of my own way to ask? If that makes sense. No, I get it. Um, it's it's challenging. Uh, it, like, I I I want um, I both I I can't like, so just. I don't even know what to call it. It's just, like, maybe everyone's socially insecure and no one really wants to accept it. Mm-hmm. But, like, so, social... It's not anxiety, I, I've, I've learned. It's not necessarily social anxiety, even though... I wouldn't say it's social it's, it's so, either. It's socially... It's just social insecurity. Like, I've always just had that problem, which is mm-hmm. probably because I've just been involved with so many 
bad or just harmful to myself that I put myself in the positions or just have been put yeah. in positions of social negativity. Like, mm-hmm. um, I, I was always, um, uh, you know, being different, being like so I was all freaking glaringly different back in middle school. Like, I was with the weird kids. I was with, um, but not the socially inept kids, just the weird kids, like, uh, the kids who, like, smoke way too much weed already, already or, like, like, and I was too pure, I, I didn't do any of that shit, so, uh, I just had, like, the weird, the kids who were just, like, oh, uh, especially in the beginning of high school, I remember that, um, my friend group was, like, very, Not even strange. It's in like high most of them in high to school. Burnouts. In high school, this is why, like I was talking about earlier, where I was like, how like two different people like have like the different like way I act. High school was definitely the part where I realized I I am like that because mm-hmm. for a good part of my like high school life, I was with like the more nerdier people, the people who didn't do, like do drugs or anything. Um, they were just like just people who just chill, just order like order pizza, play video games, kind of night, kind of people. And I was friends with a lot of them. And then as time went on and I uh, began to lose weight, like lose weight and try and attempt to be more socially, I made friends with like a lot more of like the popular people. I made friends with like a bunch of different people and I started hanging out with like a lot more people who like, instead of like, oh, I don't play video games. I'm just going to go get high with my friends. Like go, go drink, go get high. And I felt weird. And I felt like an outlier in like half the friend group. Cause I like, you know, not the, the and bo- bo- in well, both the friend groups? No, um, in right. one of the friend groups, because, like, I um, I started, like, you know, um, I, I would say it's because of, like, some, like, a little sad, like, hump in my life that I was, like, I'm going to try weed, I'm going to try drinking. Um, like, a double negative happened to me, and it got better, but, like, I don't, I don't wouldn't say that drove me to do either of them. I felt like it just sped up the time when I would have initiated it. Yeah. Because I, I, know, I know in my heart that I was always interested in doing one of, like, both of them. Trying it. Yeah, trying it. And I, I liked it. I, I liked it. I didn't, like... <laughs> you make it sound like it's, like, a, like, like, I'd try scuba diving. Like, like, I don't know. You're like, I've always been interested in scuba diving. You know, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. I, I well, get what you mean. Yeah, well, when your family owns a bar, you yeah. can't, like, alcohol is just always around you. So, you know, you've always been, like, I've always been, like, interested. And then, like, weed uh, just became, like, a thing around me with my people you hang out with like, okay, Wilmington here. seems very much like that yeah it's a it's a lot of stoners um it's a beach town yeah I was the same um but yeah so I started associating with like the stoners a lot hanging out with them making like a huge like a, making a bunch of mutual friends out of that and then like I felt weird hanging out with my like more like nerdy or simple friends I yeah mean, like simple friends because they they're the ones who like they're joke. tame yeah they're tame and they like they would joke about that stuff. They'd be like, oh yeah, dude, I'm so high, right? And like they do that kind of shit. Um, I have a few I have a few mutual friends who I used to not like, but they've gotten better about it, who were like assholes indirectly to me and some other friends I had because they're like, Oh dude, I'm so high. I smoke like they do that, like they tease the they're just like assholes about it. Um, I remember they were fucking with me because um I, I I bought a few edibles and I had a friend who can't like who couldn't sleep and he like indirectly one week uh, asked me he indirectly asked me one week like oh dude you do you have any i could buy off you and i was like not not at this moment no i don't sell but i bought i bought some brownies i was like i'm gonna buy an extra one for him and just ask him to pay me back i made money off that's why um, nice. <laughs> so so uh, so um it was like a social it was like a little smash fest ironically so i went there and i was like hey i have a brownie if you want to buy it off me just the same price i got it wait mean uh, uh, well he was doing a deal, so if he bought one off him, it would have been the same price that I would have bought. Oh, I guess. So it. yeah, um, so I was, I was giving it to him as I was doing it. These like um, the two, my two old like the mutual. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, the the twins. Let's just call them the twins. There's no correlation. It's funny to call them that. Uh, the twins. They're just like, oh, dude, weed. And I, I usually, I'm very much just like, like I keep it nice. Don't say anything mean at all. Maybe behind people's backs, but I never did it in front of them. And after they did that, because they're they're pretty like nerdy, like um, outcast kind of people, like like internet like internet people who just get like go in the dark, like four chan shit like that. I go on four chan too, but I don't mean like the weirder people who do that. Okay. And after they say that, I just go, dude, hentai babes, <laughs> yeah. dude. I, I, I start doing yeah. that back to them because I'm like, fucking, you really, yeah. you really keep bugging me. And they got so pissed. And I was like, yeah, now you know how it fucking feels. Like, you know what I mean? 
Yeah, I get that. But almost like, that's like, to me, almost like the sign of a healthy relationship if both of y'all can take it. Yeah. But obviously he couldn't. Yeah. Or they yeah. couldn't. Yeah, like, like they, they weren't, like, expecting it. Like, they literally got yeah. mad. Like, they literally got mad about it. Like, they devastated. Because, like, I could take it. Like, you know, I do it, and I'm just like, it doesn't affect me. I'm not negative. Like, I'm making good grades. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Like, it's not controlling me. I just do it for fun. But the fact that it get, it it weighs on you a lot when people are just, like, assholes about it. Yeah. Especially, like, because they, 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 they're doing it, like, not with me, if that makes sense. They're not laughing along. They're doing it, like, towards me. So, like, I was like, because they do this shit all the time. And um, I've, I, it wasn't the first time I've ever been, like, a uh, target for it. Mm-hmm. So, like, that, that's one reason why I got into, like, smoking a little bit. Because I associated with those friends. Because I kind of got ditched by that group. And I was like, I need to make better friends. So I started hanging out with those people. And then that's how I kind of, like, branched out yeah. from being, like, friends with, like, the more Tabor guys and the stoners and stuff like that. I, um, three things to say now. I just think of two. The first was, like, I, when I was with those, like, because I was with those stoner kids for a very long time. <laughs> Their drama usually it consisted of this one guy who basically dated, like, all the girls. Holy who were even, like, tangentially related. He was kind of psychotic. Um, and then... Other is, like, drug-dealing shit. And then they get into real crime, and that's when I had to stop talking to them. Like, oh, I, crime. I was literally, like, for the stoner people I hang out with, they were just the tame ones. Yeah. I, 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 I associated myself with some of the more wilder people. Um, I had I had a, I was mildly impaired once, and I had to drive someone home because the cops came to their house. A mm. um, whole story, I can't really explain it. I was inebriated a little bit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> late at night. But, um... Yeah, so I, I, cause I, I wouldn't say it's a motto, but I always try to keep drama down to the minimum. And I, I, I think I hang out with a good branch of people that aren't drama, dramatic people, like people who are healthy and know how to like negotiate and talk about their like problems. So I usually never have to worry about drama. So I've never really been one to like, and if I know people who are like very dramatic and do bad things, mm-hmm. I'm smart enough or like open enough to realize that like I don't want to associate with them because I don't want to get my like hands tied yeah like there's a difference between like being really good friends and just being a friend like i would be friends with them i wouldn't like go out of my way to like help them with things because i have my own part i feel like uh the, uh like a friend group here like you know who i'm talking about like they, they, they do a lot more crazier stuff than i do yeah i can't do that and either. i'm friends with them but I, i'm not one to like go with them for it i have my own limits yeah the risk isn't worth the reward for me exactly and that's not even the type they're doing like petty stuff i'm talking about like i literally was kind of friends with like i like had multiple times been to court for like grand theft auto and shit like because the kids back home thought they're bad and they're not bad but um the second thing you reminded me um uh in i mentioned in high school like at that point everyone kind of knew me because i definitely had grown i'm still not proud of myself especially the first two years of high school but like how i acted i was kind of still obnoxious but everyone knew me i was one of the only out gay kids in school and i was definitely the most tolerable like I was definitely the most tolerable one, um, because the only other the only other one I deem tolerable did a shit ton of crime and was an asshole. Wow. So I was definitely so I I, I but the popular kids all kind of knew me because a lot of the more popular kids were in more advanced classes. Um, they weren't the student council I didn't like. They were the highest of the high because they're a cult and they were filled with assholes for the most <laughs> part. Um, um, but like the popular kids who like partied a lot. And they were the advanced kids in, like, middle school. And then they, they like, were still smart, but they kind of fell off the wagon. Off, I yeah. Um, they all knew me. And this one girl, one of the last days of high school, she invited me. Like, we'd known each other since third grade. And we were friends. But I was friendly with her. And she invited me to her senior, uh, her graduation party. And I was like, for real? And I was like, yeah. I was like, I'm not really friends with anyone here. And she was like, it's fine. I was like, okay. And I came early as fuck. I thought like she that's said like the worst. she said that is the worst. She said come, but she feeling. said come at six, and like to me it's like okay I'll probably be one of the first ones there because I live in her neighborhood. Uh, so I was like all right whatever. But that fucking no one showed up until like eight thirty, and I was like this is really embarrassing. But I, I definitely like, I think I I kind of got proud of myself because I definitely like you went out of your comfort zone. No. I mean, sure, but um, a lot of those guys were assholes to me, or, like, indirectly assholes to me. Like, they weren't, like, as bad as, like, I want to make it out to be, but, like, you know, they definitely did not think of me as anything cool, but, like, I definitely, they were probably high, so that was probably part of it. Like, they definitely, like, clicked with me, and we're not friends or anything, we'd never talk, but, like, if we were in the same room, it wouldn't be weird anymore. Yeah. Um, 
So I was like kind of proud of myself. Like like that was definitely like a weird social. I guess it was like, kind of like a social advancement. But um, the third thing was it just reminded me like I had like a lot of the reasons why I, I had such shitty friend groups um, was because I just had problems with my. Um, I could never be the type. My parents were strict Catholics. So, like, I could never come off God and having a gay son. So, um, like, be, I could never bring my friends home. I literally had never had a friend over. I think I had one person over because I was too embarrassed because they'd want to know more about them. And, like, you know, I was friends with troublemaking kids because they were the only people who were cool with me. And, um, like, my one friend, uh, she, like, my dad would always act like, like I was, like, going to hit on her. And, like, and it was so weird because I'm like, I know you know I'm gay. Like, we can... I have to go talk about this to them when I get home, unfortunately. My therapist, like, basically mandated it, but I mandated it as well. As well. Um, but, like, shit like that made me uncomfortable, and, like, all of us, all, all three of my siblings, well, four of them, but one of them's a, I have three siblings, one of them's an outcast. The other two, my older ones, like, same stories, like, I, they were worse, too. So, like, it sucks being, like, I could never feel comfortable with, like, having friends. That's why college is so good, because, like, you're a person though. Yeah, and and I can my mom especially respects that I'm an adult and she knows that like I'm not necessarily I'm doing adult things. But I'm not necessarily the one wiling out. But like it's not it's still weird, but like I had someone vomit in my car and she knows what that means, sort of deal. And I said she was my friend, the person who vomited <laughs> she vomited in my car. She cleaned it up though with me, but so I'm not that mad anymore. Um but it's not weird. She was just like, okay. <laughs> or, like, I write for a parody newsletter, and she was like, oh, I'd love to read some of this stuff. I'm like, Mama, you wouldn't want to read it. She goes, oh, come on. I was like, Mama, you don't want to read this. And she goes, I got it. It's too dirty for the old lady. And I was like, yes, Mother. Like, I wrote an article about, like... Running train. Yes. I do remember. <laughs> that was the article I was thinking of, too. I'm like, oh, my God, she can't read this. So, um, it sucks, like, having... I think a lot of... I have a lot of parental issues, like, that didn't even bled mm-hmm. to... Friends. Um, I'm very lucky. Um, with your parents seem so fucking cool. Yeah, my parents are super cool. I felt like it took a lot of like barriers to break though, because um, it's very. I would say I was very spoiled when I was younger, which is one. Lucky you. Not well. I mean, lucky you to person like me, and you're, and I'm assuming you. Yeah, like it's good, but like all the social problems that picks up with it, like the like it's the level of entitlement. Yeah. Like I realize, like I that's one that's one thing I feel like as a person I like besides like the whole like stupid autism thing I was talking about. It's fine. I feel like that's another hurdle I had personally where like I used to be like a spoiler, like I acted like a brat, like very much like an asshole, and I very much realized that like that just wasn't like I became. I, I guess I learned empathy would be the word to say. That's good. Is I became much more of an empathetic person. Like, I comparing myself to how I was younger is, like, insanely, like, night and day. Oh, same. Um, so I was very much just a more, like, but my, like, my family and just people I had. Because my, my mom was pretty much a person who wouldn't say no. Um, I felt like I was, I was, I was pretty fat when I was younger. And I feel, uh, I feel like, yeah, I, I mean, I don't put the blame on her. No. You know, like, it takes two to tango. That's something, like, that's one, like, that's one of the empathetic words I learned is, like, it can be my fault just as much as it can be someone else's fault. You know, it's never one per- one-sided for anyone. That's really, that's a very mature thought, by the way. Mm-hmm. That is extremely mature, because, like, I struggle with that. Like, I want to put the blame on my parents for a lot of things, but mm-hmm. at some point there was I used to have my a, decision. I used to have a lot of, um... Um, aggression towards my father. Um, he just was never around, and it just there was some younger traumatic experiences I had. Nothing like, nothing bad. It was just like it was just hard to bounce back with with a younger mind, like just being that young. Um, I guess I could say it. You don't have to. No, it's nothing that crazy. Um, we were in Florida uh, for on vacation one day, and um, when I was coming, when we were leaving the arcade, I just had a great time, just like playing the arcade. I guess my parents went to a bar or something. And my dad came, My we were walking back to the car, and my dad was like, uh, like, can I talk to you by yourself? And he pretty much just started crying and told me that oh my God. him and my mom were getting a divorce. Oh, my God. And I just, definitely one of those, like, you know, not right time moments. <laughs> you just had a great day. Yeah, so I literally, from, like, I don't even know the times, but from six to, like, night, I literally just cried. I, I've never, like... I don't think I cry anymore, and I I think I blame that for reasons. I I literally, I couldn't control it. I literally cried for like five hours. Yeah. 
And uh, my dad wasn't in the bill. My dad was in the house, and my mom was there. And I talked to my mom about it. I slept with my mom, um, and it's just I had friends and stuff. It was just very, very traumatic. And it's a hard thing to go through. Yeah, I, I wouldn't know. And of course, my, of course my parents are fine about it now. Like they worked out about it. It came up a few other times, but like. They bounce back, and it's just it's just the, the thing. You, like, I was, are they still together? Yeah, they're still. Oh together. wow! Yeah, yeah, they worked. It, they worked on it. I'm very happy about that. Um, no, like I was very young. Like I, I couldn't have been more than ten. Um, it was just very traumatic, and I guess I just put that grief, like how I felt, onto him without understanding, and um, it was just a double negative because my dad does like construction work. He um. He, right now, or just, like, from, like, from when I was, like, around that age to now, he works on movies. He, um, builds sets for films. Very cool, by So, the way. so, he, yeah, thank you. He has the trap, so he has to travel a lot. He has to go to Georgia, Virginia, he has to go to different places, go to Raleigh, he has to go to all these different places. So, a lot of the time, he's not around when I was younger. Yeah. So, it was just, like, that grief and not having, like, the correlation, I kind of just put, like, a lot of baggage on him without thinking about it. Because my dad's a silent guy, uh, beyond that, anyways. So I just didn't really have, like, a person to talk to. Mm-hmm. So I just kind of, like, I very much I feel like I'm a more feminine person anyways because I had a sister and my mom, and I spent more time with my mom, so I feel like I just, like, learned that way. So I kind of just had put, like, all that baggage on my dad. And I remember younger me when I was, like, 13, like, asking my mom if my dad loves me. Like, that kind of tragic shit. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I A lot of, like, like a lot of stuff. Like, I, I, I had my own, I wouldn't say I had my own struggles, but, you know, everybody does. Um like it just had, I had to come to terms with that because as I grew up, my um, I remember one time my dad like took me aside, um, and he was just like telling me like his like not his life story, but telling me like um, me and my parents they grew up dirt poor, we grew up dirt poor, mm-hmm. and I'm sorry if I've ever done anything like bad to you, like if you if I've ever made you feel like a bad way, mm-hmm. um, he like telling he just telling me he wants me to have like the world, and <laughs> and that, that hit me hard, oh. like I, I was like, that was. That was when I was, like, 15, 16, and I never really, like, and that just kind of, like, because I that was before, like, I, I, even before that, I still had, like, a better image of my dad, like, around the age when I was, like, seven, like, 14, I was, like, on the turn about it, like, I still had, like, bad thoughts about my dad, but, like, coming into high school, I was definitely, like, seeing it differently, like, understanding more. Right. And then just my dad t- telling me that just gave me, like, a whole sense of clarity, like, you know, it's two different people's stories, like, I can't just, like... I know, like, what I know, but I, like, there's whole, there's all these things that I can't, like, even in arguments, I feel like I play, like, devil's advocate in the sense of where, like, I see where I'm just coming from, or I see where I team, a, team yeah. A is coming from, but you also can't ne- neglect side Bs. I feel like that's just, like, a, if there's ever, like, any life lesson I've ever learned myself, that's definitely, like, the biggest one. I've had, uh, I unfortunately don't have as happy of a resolution with my dad, because, um, as I said, my dad's, like, he's not an asshole like you know they're way more they're way more his fathers like he was never he never hurt me or anything but like um my my parents are very much people that you learn to love from afar um my dad it's still real i it's it like i don't like saying like i don't see him as my father like sort of thing but it's just like we've never ever had a bond like i don't even remember being young and like being close with him and i almost don't want to now which kind of sucks I know he had, like, a lot... He has his own problems with his dad. Um, and it's kind of hard right now, because I'm not going to get too much into it, because he would, he would get very upset. But he is having some issues with his dad right now, and he's been having some issues with his dad right now. So I get it, sort of. But, like, you know, I... I my brother had a lot more... He had it worse. My older brother had it always worse with my dad. Um, which is, I guess, beneficial that I kind of just flew under the radio for the most part. But, like... You know, it's still never fun. It's my. I don't. I don't know what he. He's trying. I think he realizes with all of us, like once we leave, he kind of realized he has to like sit himself back and realize like he's done some really stupid things and he's acted. He was. He was never close in my life either. He was always traveling, mm-hmm. and um. But he didn't. I mean, I'm not trying to figure out your dad, but like at least it sounded like he tried to make a connection. Yeah. Like, no. Like, he. 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 A hundred percent did. My dad didn't. He, you know, or he tried in his own way. And, and I, I remember, I have, like, some positive memories of him, but, like, I, I don't, and not, I, past, and, not past ten. And not to turn it back towards me, but, no. like, to go back into, like, the sense of, where, like, I was, like, entitled and spoiled, I feel like that mindset I had, that kind of, like, did made myself distance myself farther from him, because I was very much, like, I wouldn't say, like, I don't know the, really the right word to say, but, like, a crybaby, like, I was very much, like, an upset person. 
And my dad would try, but I would just give him a not, like, I'd just give him, like, an upset reaction. Like, I'd cry, I would do something. I was still really young. So I feel like, like, that that was especially that after that one moment. So I feel like that would just indirectly, without thinking about it, of course, knowing now, I felt like I pushed back, like, the, the distance between us. I pushed it back even more without, like, knowing I did. Yeah. And I, I mean, of course, I feel like he's still a silent person, and I feel like I don't talk to him that much. But, like, I will. Um, he's, uh, I, was, I was gonna say a minute, like, why do you think my parents are cool? Because they're super. They're, my, my mom owns a. My, my, my family on my mom's side owns a bar, and my dad. My dad and mom both party a lot because we were in walking distance from the bar. So I'll literally just go to the bar. And I didn't know for the longest time that my dad smoked weed too. <laughs> and I've, I've done both take shots and smoke with my dad recently. So That's so weird. Yeah. Something no, about that's too close. Like that's the thing. I'm like, that's weird. <laughs> like my friend. Um, no, the funniest story, the funniest story is um, I just bought a bong. Oh my God. I just bought a bong and uh, I had two of my friends. Allegedly. What? Allegedly. What? Uh, um and i was just like um okay we're about to smoke it we just we just packed the bowl and we're about to smoke it and right before we smoke it we didn't get we didn't put water in it my dad opens the glass door and he's like what are you guys doing he's, not, he's obviously a little drunk he's like oh you got a, he's like oh shit you got a bomb he's like hand me a lighter and i'm like uh okay dad i hand him a lighter no water in the bomb he takes a huge oh my God. huge 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 hit so it's burning like it's like, you need water in a bottle to cool it down. So it's not just, like, literal burning smoke. Uh, it takes a dry hit. Huge, 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 huge hit. Like, way too big. And he's just going, <laughs> like, cough, like, having a cough. And, like, why didn't you put water in this? Like, we were like, going we to. We were just about to. And just my, my, I just remember my fucking friends were just. <laughs> yeah, they're like, my mom, my dad wouldn't do that. I know, my, my parents, my, my friends were like, what the fuck, James? No, my parents, my parents are pretty cool. Mm. So, yeah, no, like, my parents are pretty cool. And um, I'm glad I've gotten over that, like, barrier uh, I set up myself. Would you have said, would you, do you think they've changed? Well, at least your dad, I don't. Um, yeah, I feel like everybody changes. I feel like I've changed just as much as they have. Um, and I feel like we do have our own distance between each other. Like, not, like, a bad one. Everybody does. Mm. I feel like there's still, like, some boundaries. But, you know, that's always with every relationship. And, um, but I feel like for the most part, we're definitely like a lot closer. That's good. And my parents tried just as much. I feel like me going to college was kind of like a, I wouldn't say like a negative thing, like kind of realization. Like, but they, 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 they've, they've become like a lot more like appreciative. Cause my mom very much is a, like, besides being like just a person who never, who would never say no to me. Uh, she very much was a hover mom where she's like, are you okay? Do you have this? Like, oh, don't forget this. We get into art, like. Um, I, I would argue with my mom a lot because she was one of the, um, I mean, of course I, I think it's funny. We still do argue a lot just because we're both very stubborn people. Hmm. Uh, I won't say no. I, I won't say I won't agree. She won't agree. And she just gets really mad at me for not accepting. She's like, I'm your mother. And like, I'm doing this. I'm like, mom, I'm literally not doing that. I remember I cried once because we were, we were literally getting into a super huge argument just because my mom was like, you're going, it was for a tournament. Ironically, it's like the third tournament I've ever been to. Um, my mom was like, you're going to want to bring this gym bag. And I'm like, I don't need the gym bag, mom. And she just kept uh, arguing with me about it. And, like, she just got really into it. I, I like, get that. I, I don't relate, but I understand. Yeah, yeah. And this like, though, that's just, like, an example of, like, an argument. Like, I'd be like, I don't need to. Like, like, and I would get upset. I, I would get annoyed with her. I don't mean this in like, a bad way, but I would get, I do get annoyed with her a lot of times because she's very much a repetitive person. And she was just like, how are you doing? Oh, what do you, do you have plans this weekend? What are you doing today? Like every time I talk to her, she's like, what do, you, "Do you have plans this week?" I'm like, "No." What are you doing today? I'm like, "Oh, I'm doing homework." I'm like, I'll call her the next day. Do you have plans this week? No, I'm not doing anything. What about tonight? I'm like, I'm still working on homework. All right, like she's just like literally, she just always asks me the same questions over and over, and that shit just irks me, you know. Like I don't have anything against it, like against her, but you know, like it it just gets. Just drains you. Yeah. Yeah. It just drains you when like, cause I, I appreciate the gesture, but like when you when, literally every time I call you, you tell me the same stuff, and like it's just a little too annoying. I, I feel like I, I don't know if that's like a very like. 
I don't know, like, very... It's not, like... Uh, no, it, it is, you know, sometimes you need a break. Like, yeah. with my parents. <laughs> yeah, like, I'll be, like, I'll be nice, and I'll, like... Because uh, my parents are, like, oh, baby, be sure to call. They'll te- they'll te- My mom will text me all the time. She'll be like, miss you, it's snow, it's raining here, I wonder if it's snowing there, or some stuff like that, and I'm just, and like, it's cute, but it's it, good it, It's cute, but, like, you know, too sweet. It, it, it hurts, because it's too sweet. Like, you get it every time, like, I appreciate it. And she's, like... And then I'll call, I'll like, oh, my God, how are you doing? you have plans this week? And I'm like, mom, you asked me this yesterday. You've asked me this two days ago. Like, I'm yeah. still the same. I would tell you if I had something going on. I remember I texted her last night just to be nice. And I was like, oh, really high. I was like, oh. I, I was like, had a good, had a good day today. I hope you're doing good or whatever. And she's like, oh, you had a good day. She's like, she's like one, four, three, which is what she, we text each other back. It's one, four, three means I love you. Oh. <laughs> um, um, Sorry. <laughs> we we tell you that, and um, my mom called. I called my mom the day after. She was asking me some questions. I was like, "Why are you asking me this or something?" And she's like, "Okay." Uh, we talked about the question for a little bit. She's like, "So do you you had a good day yesterday?" And I'm like, "Yes, mama." Yeah. What 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 did you do? And I'm like, I "Just told you." I, I, uh, I, I just did a lot of stuff that was fun yesterday. Oh really? What'd you do? I, I hanged out with some friends. Oh who? Uh, you know, <laughs> like, you know, it's just, the, I, like, she just, it's just annoying. And then, uh, like, and then, like, when we get into arguments, it's literally just because, like, my mom would be like, hey, can you do this for me? And be like, yeah, sure. You're not doing it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it in a minute. Like, you know, those, like, those kind of, like, petty, petty family things. Yeah, 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 yeah. But my mom, like, my mom just won't, like, she will, like, whenever we get into an argument, she will die on her hill. She will never, like, inch a mile. Because even when she's wrong, or like, why can't you just be nice for once? Like, telling me this, like, Mom, because you're literally, like, making me do something I don't want to do. Yeah. She's like, but yeah, but, like, every time I talk to you or just do this, you're just mad at me. I'm like, I, I, because you, I, I it's, it, it's an argument without an answer. You know what I mean? Like, right. I can't say the right thing because it's just going to keep happening. Even if, even if we know the, the goal, it's, it's, you can't reach the, you know. Yeah. It's a lot. I, I relate my, but, like, it just makes me, uh, like, my mom will do that, but the problem is, like, I can't tell her what I'm doing. Because, like, my parents are kind of judgmental people, and, like, mm-hmm. um... That, that, that's one thing, like, I'm graced to have, like, literally just having, like, my parents, um, both my parents never went to college. Um, and they're pretty successful that, for that. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're pretty hardworking people. That's really good. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Yeah. No, no. That's, like, I, such a blanket statement. That's so good. No, no, but, yeah, no, I appreciate that. Um, they're pretty hardworking people, and um, so I feel like, you know, I, I felt like that's one reason why I wanted to go to college. I wanted to, like, show that I could do that, mm-hmm. I guess. Um, but, yeah, no, my parents are pretty free-form, because they, half the shit I do, like, college, they don't understand it. I remember, I was telling them, like, no, Dad, I have to turn this in before the deadline. It's like, can't you just ask them to, like, wait a little bit? Like, no, no. college isn't a person. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that's, like, the fun, like, the cute, like, one of the cutest things I've ever had with my dad is, just, like, it's just, like, uh, yeah, no, I have to turn this in before the deadline. He's like, well, can't you just ask them to, like, hold on to it? Like, wait a little bit? Like, you're going to take a while? Like, no, it doesn't work that way. I wish, I don't know, I wish I could, I wish, but, like, I can't, even, like, stuff like that, which I know it should be, like, innocuous. It's just, like, you know, I couldn't tell who my friends were because, like, my mom could definitely pin, like, one of my friends is, like, I would not get along with her too well because like she had crazy dyed hair and like she oh. was a, she you know she was not like a scene kid but she had crazy dyed hair she was just a you know she was a weird girl yeah um shit like that the, the same one who my dad thought i was hitting on um but um i can't like you know i can't tell her like i went to a party last night or um you know i can't oh my god i mean dating has always been weird with my family but I can't tell her i want to date she'd fucking be like uh she'd just be really like uncomfortable yeah. with it she's not and, I, like, I think that's what... I want to think that's what's kind of holding it back with my relationship with my parents. Like, that sort of thing. They're, but not, they're not treating you like an equal. That's, it's not that. that it's... I, I don't know what I want from them anymore. That's so, so like, it, it's very much a push and pull thing. My, well, all my family... But, like, I, you know, I want to think, like, oh, what's holding me back is just they, they really haven't come to terms with their son being a homo. And um, they're not... My dad's kind of in denial. My mom's just super uncomfortable with it. And I'm kind of just, like... My, my counselor and I were talking about it, and, like, I was just, like, my last counseling session, I was, like, I'm, like, tired of it. Like, I don't want to have this conversation with them, but, like, you know, I hate to sound like it's current year sort of thing, but it's fucking 2019. My mom has known for five years out of the six I've been out of the closet. Sure, she went through my computer history and found out, 
uh, that was not fun. Um, not at all. That was seriously fucked up. But um, <laughs> the same day Super Smash Bros. came out, that's how I remember. Wow. Yeah. Okay, uh, wow. And Pokemon Alpha Sapphire. That was the game I got. So I always have that day stuck in my head. Um, so she kind of <laughs> fucked me over. Um, but, and, you know, I've hold, I, we never talked about it. And I almost don't want to at this point. But she's known for five, six years, five years. And she's come, she's definitely progressed. But my parents are not people of change. My mother has definitely been like, like, it was a big step. Huge fucking step. When, like, she would talk about, for years afterwards, like, me having sons and daughters. And, like, one day she, like, mentioned offhandedly, like, you could tell your nieces and nephews this. And that's a fucking big deal for her. Because, like, she was accepting that I didn't want kids. Which I've slightly come around to, but I don't think I'll ever have kids. But I don't blame you. I'm not going to do it either. We shouldn't be thinking about that anyway. <laughs> but she's... So that was, like, a big step for her. But, like, she's very much the person who she, she the first time the, basically when I actually came out to her I was high on wisdom tooth medicine not a good idea but the first thing she said to me sober was basically like I don't want to show up to your wedding which at first I was honored I was like oh my god mom you think I'd get married like you're, you're like I'm eligible enough for that but you know it was kind of fucked and so like yeah, that's, we, a, that's a very mean, mean thing to say so I, I I've had to like I have to go tell them my, my dad it's weird. I know he'd be more accepting of it. Like, he knows, too. I know he'd be more accepting of that sort of shit. But he, he grew up in poor part of New York City. They both are from New York City. My mother was definitely had more money. My, my father came up from a poor thing. He had a weirder family relationship, obviously. So he's been around some weird people. But he's definitely had some creepy contentions with pretty much anyone. Like, it's almost like he's trying to fit the mold of a stereotypical Republican where I'm like, Dad, I know you're not, like... I don't not mean to roast on Republicans or whatever. I'm not that type of person, but, like, I know you're not. Like, I know you're just weirdly... Like, you weren't expecting to have a gay son, so it's almost like you put yourself in denial just so you don't have to face it. But, like, once he faced it, I know he's not going to be, like... It wouldn't be too weird. Probably because I don't... Maybe I'm thinking it's too weird because I probably just have such a distant relationship with him anyway, but, like, um, it's kind of like the pinnacle scene in, like, some homo TV show is like when the parents show up at the wedding and like my dad would my mom I don't know like seriously like even now like talking to her I'm like I don't know I think she'd go out of obligation and I don't want her there if she's gonna go there for obligation because I'm like you shouldn't go there because you're on your son or whatever like you should go there because you want to you're happy yeah like I, I don't want someone there just because like they feel yeah. like they should like fuck that so like so I, I, I have to I don't know what I'm gonna say to them but it's kind of just like what if they find this um, it's kind of just like I need to, like we need to we need to talk about this. No, hundred percent. Because I I feel sorry for you. Like that's a, that's such a tragic thing to deal with. Because I uh, I feel like I'm just like I always just feel like I'm super lucky with my parents and my family overall. Yeah. Um. I I like like I said I grew up feeling very entitled and just having like a very sour world on the view like sour world view because you know I'm lonely. I got what I wanted. I was very much a negative person, and I just grew out of that. And I have like a weird, a weird like antithesis of like things I've seen with my family. Because um, one person who puts me through college a lot is my aunt. My aunt owns a restaurant. The restaurant, yes. Yeah. And um, she 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 Guy said, Fieri. Yes, yeah, <laughs> Guy Fieri visited the restaurant. Um, she gives she gives me money towards college. Like she she's to help me pay for both That's my very semesters, nice. and um, and. She has uh, two kids. Um, one of them went to college. Uh, she graduated, and now she doesn't really do anything. Like she just lives. She chilling. Yeah, she just lives. I don't think she does anything much. I don't think she does anything with her degree. Ooh. But she just works at the restaurant. Uh, lives with her like fiance, and um, just lives off. I guess like I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be surprised if my aunt gave her money too. And then um, there's her. I, I think it's her stepson. I don't know. I don't know the full. The, yeah, this whole story. Full situation. Pretty much, um, he he um, flunked high school, so they had to pay for private school, so a lot of money. Yeah, a lot, uh, lot, 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 lot of money. So he did that, graduated. He was like, okay, I want to go to fashion school. So he goes to fashion school in New York. Um, they buy him an apartment in New York. They oh pay. God. They pay like all of it. They pay for his apartment. They pay for his thing. And apparently, he went like off the map because he's like, I need more like. Um, he won't tell them their his grades. He was like, "I want more money for another apartment or some Hell shit." Oh no! Yeah, like all this crazy tile shit. It just felt weird because um, 
she was telling me that, like, with, uh, it was me, my mom, and my aunt, she was telling me that, and she was like, and then she just told me, like, I'm so happy you're not like that, and that was just such a sense of clarity for me. And you almost feel, we- like, a little weird. Yeah. Because I get it, or at least I feel weird in that situation. Because, like, it, it is a weird situation. Yeah, you're yeah. just like, damn. It's just a weird sense of clarity, because, like, it's not far from me that I could have done that. Like, that could have been me with how much, like, I get I just been like, I very much think I've just been a humbled person. Like, yeah. I, I, people have just like, sh- like I've learned from so much from people, and I feel like I've, I feel like I'm very bad at saying thank you. I feel like I'm a very much a nice person because of that. Like, there's so many people I have to say thank you for, yeah. and I just can't show it. I that's one thing. Like, as much as I am distant with my family, like I don't like to feel too entitled, which probably has nipped me in the ass because my 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 it's, it's I know this is like it's so, it sounds so sad. Like my counselor was weirdly sad about it. Like, I felt entitled to ask for my parents to be cool with that sort of thing, being homo, being, a, like, gay. Mm-hmm. And, like, I know that's so fucked, but, like, like I felt, I still kind of do. Like, I almost feel like I'm, like, who am I to, like, tell some Because, okay, I've always seen, besides my parents and my family, well, my, my brother has now come around to it. He I came out to him when he was, like, maybe 20 and like he was he was always he was like a very gamer sort of dude and he, he, he came around to it and my sister i only re- even though i knew she knew because she's my sister i only recently came out to her because she was always distant she's eight years older than me okay. um so but okay my parents um besides them i've literally i mean i've had asshole kids but like as much as i was like flamboyant and obnoxious you know i could fend for myself there was definitely some insecurity about being different and whatever but like for the most part, you know, this is a fucking glee where the kid gets, like, thrown against a locker or whatever, like, and then, like, the kids all sing or whatever, like, you know. I've always been very lucky and, like, I didn't have a terrible hostile environment. So I almost internalized it as, like, being unaccepted is an other person thing. It's like, oh, it's another person thing. Like, that doesn't happen to me. You know, I'm too, I'm lucky. And so coming to terms with it is, like, coming to terms with, like, thinking it's not I know it sounds weird but it's almost like it's not reality to me like it's like oh that's a TV show sort of thing and me like I guess approaching my parents with it is like accepting that it's reality and like it's, it's hard uh, so I don't know exactly what to tell them because there was I really long I wanted to be emancipated for a really long time I almost betted for it like I was really close to just fucking trying it out uh that was a dumb idea. Oh my god. Dumbest idea I would have ever done. Um, uh, but, like, you know, I, because I just was so over it. Like, I was like, you know, you know, you can either have, like, a fucking gay son or no fucking son at all. I wanted to, I wanted to say for so long. Some dramatic fucking 2003 Prayers for Bobby movie. You don't know that movie, but... I don't. Prayers for Bobby uh, movie. Um, but, like, you know, like, just walk out and, like... Uh-huh. I know I would hate that, but it's so close where it's just, like... I'm no, s- it's so I close did, to boiling over. Where it's yeah, just like, I, tot- I totally understand that with how, like... I'm not like, angry, I'm just tired. Like, yeah, yeah, no, you can, you put up with so much for so long. It's just such a... I would say that's unfair. Just, like... I, I want to, like, I, fucking dating I, is already a problem with me. I, I always have to ask myself, like, oh, what's wrong with me? But, like, like, you know, if I ever get to the point where I'm, like, I'm dating someone, like, I want to at least say, like, I went on a date with this person. Mm-hmm. Or, like, here is my You boyfriend. don't want to have to hide your true self. Like, that's well, just... Uh, my, I mean, myself. Yeah, I don't, I, that, that's like, what I am. It's true, yeah. You don't want to hide, like, just who you are. You don't want to, like, just pretend. Like, I, I totally understand I've never that. I've for so long, so. Yeah, that, that's so much, like, baggage that you just have to deal with for no reason. Like, and they're not used to, they're, you know, it's, it, and you always know, said, I can't put the whole blame on myself, or on, on them. Mm-hmm. I mean, I haven't talked to them about it for six years, so it's going to be a lot of, like, they don't know what the fuck to do. I mean, you know, my mom, oh my god, this is the most childish thing ever childish so my mom watches, watches a lot of the cw which i have some problems with the cw because i personally think they're like the whole thing of diversity is just so they don't get in trouble and they just use minorities as check marks i think a lot of tv does that yeah um but so but like there's this one show that she and my younger brother love watching um and like i like walked in um i was like talking to her about it was my last i think i was talking to her about work or something and and like it was like a commercial or something for like the next episode. And it was like uh, one of the main characters is like a bisexual woman or something. And like she makes out with a woman. My mom literally, oh my fucking god, she was like, ew, uh, ew. she was like, oh my god, oh my god. And I was like, I was like, 
I was like, not only is that such a childish reaction, I'm like, I'm right fucking. Like, like, yeah. I, like I'm not asking for you to march in a fucking pride parade or some bullshit, like, join P-Flag or whatever, parents and friends of lesbians and gays. Um, but, like, oh my, like, fuck, I was like, just, just, just be, just be, have, I re- have your mind be open to she it. She reacted to how de- me, 12 years old, in denial of being a homo would, as a 50-year-old woman. Like, that's how I reacted. Like, oh my god, ew, uh, ew. I'm like, <laughs> you'd be like, like, Peter, are you gay? And would be like, no, <laughs> sort of thing. <laughs> Why did you say that? Yeah, I'm not. God, uh, well, I would right. never, I would never. So, like, so, like, I was like, father, like, I, I, like, that shit pissed me off. So, sorry to make this all about me, and we've run for so long. Oh, it's just it it's it's hard and it's it's kind of been on my mind since my last counseling meeting was only last Friday I think so it's it's still been on my mind and like I might have to do it like it's kind of like torn at me for so fucking long like I I might I was gonna wait till the summer but I might do it over fucking Easter which is not gonna be fun um, but my sister um, oh my god we can end on this which is about me which is great ending on about me um, when I came out to my sister um, that shit like. It was it was very difficult because I never sober verbally like came out to a fam- family family member. Yeah. My brother I came out over Skype like online. Um, my mother I came out she found out because she went through my computer history and then I came out to her high on wisdom tooth medication yeah. and my father found out. He asked me literally a week before my mom uh, he asked me if I was gay and I told him no because I wasn't ready to talk to him about it the week before my mother went through my computer history which is hilarious to me. So I know he's, like, suspected and if not known for a while. And then, long story short, my mother told him about some things. I w- like, I was trying to date, and she found out, and she got pissed. Um, and so she told my dad, because she... she... I guess I don't have to explain the whole thing. Okay, so she went through my computer history again at 18. Um, and I was talking to a friend literally about dating. And I literally was saying, like, I'm not ready for, like, sex. Like, that's not something I want to do right now. And, like, she never had to talk with me, but I was fucking 18, and she, like, trapped me in her car, and she, like, tried to confront me about it, and, like, I had a panic attack. It was, actually, it was a mental breakdown. Fun. Um, and, uh, I, you know, seriously fucked me over for, like, a long time. It still kind of hurts. And, like, I don't remember it sort of thing. Like, <laughs> my mind lapsed. I remember, like, being taken to a police station at one point and sort of shit, like, because I wasn't myself. And I wasn't, I don't blame her for that. But she, like, told my dad what was happening. So I know he knows now. Mm-hmm. Um, anyways, um, and I'm not mad at her for that. But I'm, I'm mad at her for going to my condition. But, yeah, like, that's what I I'm don't saying. know what the... I don't know what I'd do in that situation. So I'm not mad at her for that. It sucks that she put me in that position. But whatever. My sister... Um, so none of them I verbally came out to in my right of mind. My sister was the first one. And so um, she told me. She was like, oh, I've always known. And I was, like, slightly offended. But I was like, am I fucking kidding? You know, she's my sister. She painted my nails when I was six. Uh, I hate nail polish now, but, like, she painted my nails on the six. No, yeah. You know, sort of thing. Um, she was like, yeah, I've known her. Her best friend in high school back home, but back in Jersey, is gay now. He, he's, like, in the military, too. I searched him up, and, like, he went in some, like, fucking, like, magazine, like, what? interview. It wasn't a big magazine. It was, like, a web Thing, yeah. And they like interviewed him. He's like, "What's it like being gay and in the military?" And I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> um, I just got curious one day. But um, so she's like cool with it. She's like, "I've always known." And like you know, I always tell my husband. She was like, "I told my husband like, if and I, my my sister has told me some shit that nobody knew. I don't even think my parents know still about things. I won't even allude to what they are. Okay. So, but things. So she and I have had a weird, especially um, my last." It was so funny. Um, uh, I knew I suspected something would happen, and I got my sister's number. And that week, that's when my mental breakdown happened, and I could talk to my sister about it. Um, I didn't tell her what happened, but I was like, "Just some shit happened." And she was like, "Okay." And we got closer to that. She started telling me some personal things. I'm sorry, I'm going on a bunch of tangents, You're but totally it, fine. Um, it's all part of the show. She, you know, so we were already kind of close, but I never told her what was up. So I told her, and she was like, "You know." Me and my husband, like, um, like I was like, I told him, I was like, no. My brother's not out yet, obviously, to, 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 to me, whatever, but, like, I know. And, like, he was like, oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> like, totally, he's a flamer. And um, he was like, my sister was like, you know, mom, mom ever did anything, like, like immediately, like, if they ever kicked him out, like, 
we, I'm like, we're taking him in and shit. Like, and I was like, my mom would never do that. Um, I did have nightmares when I was 16 about being kidnapped and being taken to like those, uh, I think I talked about this on, I did, I talked about this on the first episode about being sent to a conversion camp. Cause that's a real shit that happens. Like they'll take kids in the middle of the night. It's kind of fucked. And my parents yeah. would never do that, but it was just a, it's a lot of internalized fear. So that meant a lot. And I was like, you know, it almost didn't mean so much to me now, but I know knowing 16 year old me that fucking like, oh my God. So, you know, you know, it, 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 and you know, I've never had family, not just except me, but like, I guess that's like kind of fighting for me. I don't have family fight for me, even on sexuality aside, like my parents don't fight for me. Like, and I don't blame, well, it would not be nice, but like, you know, it's made me who I am, I guess. I remember over spring break, I think you saw it on my Snapchat story, like, I was talking shit about me behind my oh, back. Oh, yeah. And that shit was fucked yeah. because, like, they've yeah. always, I've, I, I don't want to, I don't want to toot my own horn, but, like, my parents have definitely, even with the gay thing, they've definitely seen the most promise out of me. And, like, it was kind of fucked when I, like, heard my mom, like, you know, I was like, I was like, that's, no, that's terrible. Nobody should ever, she, you know, it's do that. fucked. I was just like, yeah, that's 100% fucked. It's because, but again, it is my own fault because I don't let her into my interests and my endeavors. She doesn't know about this podcast. And I've been doing this for, she doesn't even know that I'm, like, she knows that I'm majoring in radio and she knows that I'm going into a radio program and stuff, but she doesn't know what I want to do with my life because I, she's been so judgmental. She's done a bunch of fuck she stuff. I love it. her. She, yeah, she doesn't deserve it. I don't want to say that. Oh. I, she, I don't, but I personally just, I don't see a reason to because, yeah. you know, she be talking shit like, oh, you don't, like, you know, I don't think it's, he's going anywhere. Like, I don't think he's thinking in his right mind. And sure, you know, I, I can understand why I almost seem like, chasing pipe dreams but like it's totally attainable though. if you want you know if you want it you'll fight for it okay. and i you're totally ready to fight for it you're totally a motivated person like out of everybody i've seen towards this like major you're one of the people who actually like it's can hard. do it yeah it, it's fucking hard but like you know it's a lot of it's internal problems like I, maybe sometimes i have to like step aside for myself and i'm like you know don't dramatize all your family fucking issues but you know this is my life <laughs> and so we have oh my god this is the longest episode and like we i'm not cutting any of this out so like this is the longest episode so i'm gonna end on two things we're gonna try and be concise because we're almost at two hours um <laughs> we're past two hours actually no it's 151 oh, okay. uh anyways uh do you think you're an interesting person? I ask people that at the end of the day. Oh my god. Um, I was thinking about that. Shit. I literally had a conversation with someone about that. Um, I think I'm a mix. Uh, I think I think on the surface, I think I'm pretty much a boring person. Like I, I'm not I don't I'm not really open a lot. But I think I do have a lot of interesting hobbies and I think Yes. I had a thing on my Instagram, I asked people I a similar thing. I asked them, Are you a funny person? Because I think that goes hand in hand. I think you said no, which is not true. Um, uh, I, uh, yeah, because I think I think funny and interesting are like two sides of the same truth. They're definitely characteristics. Yeah, I think I think <laughs> nice. depending on the scenario, I can be interesting when I'm in the right place to bloom, like be myself. I think I totally am an interesting person because I think interesting just comes down to like what you do for fun. Exactly. How you do, what you do for fun? How you like exfoliate that like, it's what makes you you yeah and i think i do things i'm interested in, like um because ironically enough phil asked me that um uh, my friend really? my friend phil um he was like james i have a question to ask you and i was like a little anxious because like what like, <laughs> it's when to tell me like like well you go with me <laughs> yeah i was like i was like our friendship's over like so she's like oh, oh shit just, i was like I was, no, no, no i was just like, okay. I was, like, like worst case like possibly the highest worst case scenario yeah and he was just like i think i'm becoming boring <laughs> Aww. And he literally told me that. I was like, well, what makes you think that? Like, do you think I'm boring? I'm like, no, but what makes you think that? And I was like, if you think you're boring, obviously you need to find something that's not boring to do. I was like, and I was like, what hobbies do you do? That's what I asked him. And I was like, if you can't think of any, ask me. I was like, I like collecting music. I like, yeah. I like reading manga. I like talking. I like playing games competitively. I like smoking weed. <laughs> I like drinking, I like partying. Like, of course, there's a, like, little more, like, like, like stretch. Yeah. The stretch thing. I'm not really that into it. But I like, I like, I like collecting music. Like, I just list all these things. Like, 
Sure, I'm not in depth, like super into them, but the the fact that I do like doing it, I like photography. Right. Just the fact that you're into it is a branch of who you actually are, and I feel like that makes you interested. Yeah. If you can't say what you're into and what you do and why you have what what you find fun, why you find it fun, what you do to to be a fun person, yeah. that is when you're uninterested. You gotta reconsider yourself yeah. too. Yeah, but I feel like because with, I think everyone's interested. But I feel like. As long as I'm having fun and doing something and people are laughing and smiling along with me, I feel like I'm interesting. Okay. Of course, of course people can see you not to be interesting because they have different have a whole different story. They have different interests. But it's all in the beauty of I, humanity. It's humanity. the beauty of humanity. Yeah. Well, that's why I started this sort of thing. So, all right. So the last thing, and then we will make this episode concise and end and conclude and whatever <laughs> all right so you can see that this table that i've been recording on i've been having it since the i think the last episode uh, no i think cameron signed it live as well i know felicia did oh i'm gonna oh uh, i get to sign you it. get to sign the table everyone oh, signs yeah. everyone signs the table you can i can turn the table i can lift up the microphone if you want to do some weird shit all right here let me let me i got it all right cool perfect here i go i was gonna i was I'm gonna writing the first letter fuck of off my name. fuck off Oh, that's, J, shut up! J is written. Oh my god, I just put JJ. Perfect. Look at that. Now I've got to make sure that dries. Uh, I will make sure that. I meant to go. I always, feel, I always feel bad when I have to do such like a, I don't know, like a really nice moment because I have really terrible handwriting. So it like it really lowers like how cool it actually is. Like, oh yeah, sign your names. Alex's last name is literally illegible. So it's, dude, all mine is. I mean, I can tell what it is. It's fair. All right, well, then Felicia's, well, hers is real pretty, but. Yeah, See, yeah. That, that's, because I, I, I'm, I'm friends with people who just write in cursive normally. Oh. So just like, I'm just oh. like, I'm just like, I can't compete, because I have like fucking like scribbles, like both draw, I draw and write like a kindergartner. And then I have friends like writes that are like fucking making like Shakespeare symphony, Shakespeare symphony, Beethoven symphonies, like right there. With writing? Yeah, I'm like, holy shit. Hey, hey. All right. Well, this has been, oh my God, this has been a very, very personal as an episode, but like weirdly, per- I didn't expect me to talk about my family <laughs> and our <laughs> families. Yeah, honestly, yeah. yeah. I don't even know how we, well, friends. Anyways, um, <laughs> we will, uh, I think next week, um, I haven't gotten it, but I mentioned Cameron's episode, episode two, he's dating someone and. I really wanted to just get to know her a lot, so I believe next week's episode will be with her. Um, you can't quote me on that. And uh, I think it's weird. I have only three more episodes to record. Until the season finale. I don't know about that. I'm considering doing it over the summer, but I have to I have to figure that out because, like, I'm, my college people are not going to be around. You know, we're all in the same area. I kind of maybe I'll interview some people back home. I don't know. Um uh, thank you for enjoying, and if you sat through this all, uh, I'd greatly appreciate it. Um, as always, you can find me on Twitter at Sauerkraut, S-O-U-R-K-R-O-W-T, and uh, my art Instagram, which I haven't been uploading because I haven't been feeling creative lately, is uh, Peber underscore art. <laughs> um, thank you all for listening, and have a wonderful good day, Bye-bye. night, Bye-bye. afternoon, Bye-bye. twilight. Dusk, dawn, goodbye.